International Speedway. With long straightaways and wide corners, it's one of the fastest tracks on the circuit. These metal beasts were created to run free here, powered by an engine that breathes fuel and air, compressing and combusting gas to generate 850 horsepower. Gentlemen, start your engines! And they are the masters of the wheel who are here to tame it, driven by the heart of a machine that pumps competitive fire through their veins, pushing them fearlessly beyond 200 miles an hour, side by side with danger for one goal, that when the day is over, they can say, I am the fastest. Welcome to Michigan. Good afternoon and happy Father's Day from Brooklyn, Michigan. NASCAR on TNT, proud to bring you coverage of the 15th race of the year in the Sprint Cup Series. It is the Quicken Loans 400. The car is just about ready to roll off the pit lane here at Michigan International Speedway. And before they do that, let's send it trackside one more time and hear from our pit reporters, Ralph Shaheen leads us off. Adam, I spoke with Kevin Harvick just moments ago before he crawled into the car. I said, tell me what your thoughts are about these new tires. He said, when you go down into the corner, the car normally feels like it touch down into the racetrack. Now it just feels like it's up on top. It's going to make turn one for these guys a real challenge throughout the course of the afternoon, Chris Neville. Well, Jeff Gordon's 20 seconds in points. 2012 has been engine problems, tire issues, contact on the racetrack. But he's got two wins at Michigan and a total of 14 wins at the next three tracks. If Jeff Gordon's going to turn this year around, it's going to happen in the next month. Matt? Chris, Denny Hamlin has always been able to count on Michigan as a nice momentum booster going into the hot summer months. He's won here the past two June races, trying to make it three in a row. Denny was probably the class of the field in practice before the tire change. Now he's cautiously optimistic. And Larry Mack, the weather has once again changed. Now it's probably the hottest we have seen it all weekend here at the Michigan International Speedway. But Matt, the buzzword all weekend, speed. 19 drivers qualified over 200 miles per hour, but that was one lap of qualifying. How about 400 miles of racing? What's too fast and how long can they maintain those speeds? And I think Marty Snyder is with the crew chief that might can answer it. He was the fastest in qualifying yesterday. Absolutely, Todd Parrott. And obviously with this tire, we're a little bit slower, about 195 miles an hour, still quick. But Todd, can you really keep up that kind of pace all day long? You know, we're going to work at it, Marty. You know, uh, you know we had a great qualifying effort. Uh, you know, to run 203 miles an hour here at Michigan is uh, pretty awesome. But, uh, you know, our happy hour speed slowed down about, uh, you know, almost two seconds from where we qualified. So uh, hopefully this uh, Stanley Ford Fusion, the guys in the uh, pits and, and uh, the team have made some good decisions. Uh, it was kind of sketchy there to start that last practice with that new tire. But uh, hopefully we've got a good balance and we put this thing in winter circle. But Adam, they certainly honored that speed. Look what the track presented him. They said he's a speed king. A little uh, cheetah for Marcos Ambrose for going 203 miles an hour. He has been fast all weekend long, Marty. And now we get our quick and loans starting grid. Marty just pointed it out on the pole. Ambrose, fastest man in NASCAR, first career cut pole in the 2010 Michigan winner. Kevin Harvick starting alongside. Casey Kane and Greg Biffle both have won here at Michigan. They're on row three. Ryan Newman qualified sixth. He drops to the rear with an engine change. Tony Stewart, Trevor Payne sharing row four this afternoon. Joey Logano, Mr. Momentum, won here yesterday, won last week at Pocono in the Sprint Cup Series. And Jimmy Johnson dropping to the rear, the five-time champion, looking for his first Michigan win this afternoon. Denny Hamlin has won the last two June races at Michigan. He's on row six with Regan Smith. Let's see if we can hear from this afternoon's pole sitter, Kyle. Uh, Marcus Ambrose, it's Kyle Petty in the booth. You got me? Marcus, this is Cal Petty in the booth. Do you have me? So we'll check back with Marcus in a minute, maybe talking to the team. You saw Juan Pablo Montoya there in row 11. Row 12, Casey Mears and Scott Riggs. Row 13, Kurt Busch is back after his suspension last week at Pocono. Brad Keselowski, the hometown boy, would love to win here at Michigan International Speedway. Jeff Gordon, two victories at this track, but got a long way to go today. He's in row 14 with Michael McDowell. Mike Bliss, Josh Wise in row 15. 
Bobby Labonte, 2000 champion, three-time Michigan winner. On row 16 with Landon Castle, who did a nice job at Michigan one year ago. You want to watch some fun? Let's watch Kyle Busch try and drive through the field today. He won here in August, but he's got a long way to go this afternoon. Now we see once again if we can hear from the driver who's got the view from the front row. Mark Samros, this is Kyle Petty in the booth. You got me? So, keep a consistent speed coming to the line. That's all they ask. <laughs> Marcus, <laughs> this is Kyle Petty in the booth. Do you have me? Yeah, I got you, Kyle. All right, man. I've been trying to talk to you for about three laps. <laughs> I, I guess I'm brain dead up here. But um, how big a change is it going to be with a green racetrack and this new tire? I've been telling myself all day, just believe in the side force, because we're going to need all of it we can get. The side's pretty slick. It's been raining, but I just don't quite know what to expect here, so I'm going to get off the start line, try and get a good start, and uh, see what happens. Well, you're in the right place to be in this this mess right now, to be up front. As, how much did the racetrack change from the other day when you were here with this tire to this tire? Yeah, it's been a big change, definitely. We uh, we all got caught off guard a little bit by it. Just got to stuck the back of the car up. Get some it. What's too fast and how long can they maintain those speeds? And I think Marty Snyder is with the crew chief that might can answer it. He was the fastest in qualifying yesterday. Absolutely, Todd Parrott. And obviously with his tire, we're a little bit slower, about 195 miles an hour still quick. But Todd, can you really keep up that kind of pace all day long? You know, we're going to work at it, Marty. You know, uh, you know we had a great qualifying effort. Uh, you know, to run 203 miles an hour here at Michigan is uh, pretty awesome. But, uh, you know, our happy hour speed slowed down about, uh, you know, almost two seconds from where we qualified. So uh, hopefully this uh, Stanley Ford Fusion, the guys in the uh, pits and, and uh, the team have made some good decisions. Uh, it was kind of sketchy there to start for that last practice with that new tire. But uh, hopefully we've got a good balance and we put this thing in winter circle. But Adam, they certainly honored that speed. Look what the track presented him. They said he's the speed king. A little uh, cheetah for Marcus Ambrose for going 203 miles an hour. He has been fast all weekend long, Marty. And now we get our quick and loans starting grid. Marty just pointed it out on the pole. Ambrose, fastest man in NASCAR, first career cut pole in the 2010 Michigan winner. Kevin Harvick starting alongside. Casey Kane and Greg Biffle both have won here at Michigan. They're on row three. Ryan Newman qualified sixth. He drops to the rear with an engine change. Tony Stewart, Trevor Bain sharing row four this afternoon. Joey Logano, Mr. Momentum, won here yesterday, won last week at Pocono in the Sprint Cup Series. And Jimmy Johnson dropping to the rear, the five-time champion, looking for his first Michigan win this afternoon. Denny Hamlin has won the last two June races at Michigan. He's on row six with Regan Smith. Let's see if we can hear from this afternoon's pole sitter, Kyle. Uh, Marcus Ambrose, it's Kyle Petty in the booth. You got me? Marcus, this is Kyle Petty in the booth. Do you have me? So we'll check back with Marcus in a minute, maybe talking to the team. You saw Juan Pablo Montoya there in row 11. Row 12, Casey Mears and Scott Riggs. Row 13, Kurt Busch is back after his suspension last week at Pocono. Brad Keselowski, the hometown boy, would love to win here at Michigan International Speedway. Jeff Gordon, two victories at this track, but got a long way to go today. He's in row 14 with Michael McDowell. Mike Bliss, Josh Wise in row 15. Bobby Labonte, 2000 champion, three-time Michigan winner. On row 16 with Landon Castle, who did a nice job at Michigan one year ago. You want to watch some fun? Let's watch Kyle Busch try and drive through the field today. He won here in August, but he's got a long way to go this afternoon. Now we see once again if we can hear from the driver who's got the view from the front row. Mark Samros, this is Kyle Petty in the booth. You got me? So, keep a consistent speed coming to the line. That's all they ask. <laughs> Marcus, <laughs> this is Kyle Petty in the booth. Do you have me? Yeah, I got you, Kyle. All right, man, I've been trying to talk to you for about three laps. I, I guess I'm brain dead up here. But um, how big a change is it going to be with a green racetrack and this new tire? I've been telling myself all day, just believe in the side force, because we're going to need all of it we can get. The side's pretty slick. It's been raining, 
But I just don't quite know what to expect here, so I'm going to get off the start line, try and get a good start, and uh, see what happens. Well, you're in the right place to be in this this mess right now, to be up front. As, how much did the racetrack change from the other day when you were here with this tire to this tire? Yeah, it's been a big change, definitely. We uh, we all got caught off guard a little bit by it. Just got to snuck the back of the car up, get some confidence back behind the wheel. So I think if we can drive it in deep, uh, deeper than everyone else, uh, you know, I think it'll set the whole car up. So that's what I'm focused on. All right, man. Well, thank you for the Vegemite sandwich this morning on uh, Countdown to Green. I appreciate that. And I didn't get the king anything for Father's Day, so bring him home something. All right, man? Okay, you got it, man. That Vegemite is my secret ingredient. Marcus Ambrose, first career pole. It's going to be bad fast down into turn one this afternoon. Now we get our Geico race analysis for the Quicken Loans 400 here at Michigan. 400 miles, 200 laps. We should circle this right here. Pit road speed, 55 miles per hour. It was a big part of the equation last week, Wally. Yes, it was. And I, I think I want to get back to what Marcus was saying going down in turn one. You know, he's the first one down there. So, I mean, I don't. That, that's not the greatest spot to be in. I don't, I don't know if it is or not, because at least when you're following guys in there, you can start seeing what their cars are doing and react. But when you're the first guy down in there, it's a Hail Mary. Yeah, I, I think like we said in the opening here, I think the best spot to be is Jimmy Johnson, Ryan Newman, yeah, and, Carl and, and Carl Edwards, Edwards yeah. right now. Because these guys are going to need plenty of room. And we saw last week on the start of the race, the 11 car of Denny Hamlin drive in and lose the nose and get up in the car. And I think that's what these guys on the outside are worried about on the inside. But it's only a groove and a half wide right now. Paul Sitter gets lane choice. Marcus Ambrose said, put me on the outside. We had a rain delay of nearly two hours. But it's gorgeous now. We are ready for a Father's Day edition of NASCAR Sprint Cup Series racing in the Irish Hills of Michigan. Front row, Marcus Ambrose and Kevin Harvick. We are green at MIS. Well, Kevin Harvick got a rock start. Side by side through turn two. A couple of guys trying to make it three wide. Marcus Ambrose, great start at the front. That's Casey Kane right behind him. Then Matt Kenseth. Kevin Harvick started on the outside of row one. And as we complete lap one, Harvick finds himself back in the fifth position. Here's Regan Smith inside of Eric Almarola. Right behind him, Denny Hamlin working over Paul Menard. Trouble behind him. That's Kurt Busch spinning down the back straightaway. First caution of the day. There you go. Something is wrong. Car is beyond loose. It's like a right front flat. Had a caution lap one last week at Pocono, lap two this afternoon at Michigan for the man who won the championship in 2004. And Kurt had his issues up here in practice. I, th I think he spun two or three times in, uh, in, in between nationwide. this and the nationwide cars. Yep. So, so he's had some issues. But, you know, when, when Kurt talks about the right front being flat, that it's so loose, that's what everybody has said, how slick this racetrack. You could see the smoke develop right there. He was already into his spin, but you see the marks. So this thing got away from him. He was pretty good ways from the wall, whether he was outside the groove or not. You couldn't tell from that. Yeah, he's way up. Where did he right get there. the damage in the front? He must he, have got it to somebody there. Right, right there, I think. Yep. Yeah, he had to. Have. But you see how high he was. He was he was pretty high right there, uh, compared to where these other guys that had started the race. Kurt Busch third yesterday here in nationwide competition, and there's a good look, Wally. I'm trying to see who he gets into. Right there, I can't a make it out. Little bit of a brush. Like the David Gillen machine that got him in the right side. He runs up there, hit the wall. He's wrecking right front rail, right front. You just slow it down, slow it down, slow it down. Keep it straight. There you go. Yellow is up. That's yeah, so nice having that pavement down there. 
Do I, it's so nice to have that pavement yes. down there. You, that used to be grass. Remember so. when that was grass? Woo. Oh, my gosh. He'd still be going. Yeah, and when a car would get down there, it just picked up speed. See, they've done some damage repair to the 51 car of Kurt Busch. And you could see from almost every one of those angles, the rest of the cars were down. He was up a good car length and a half, or car, a lane and a half. Uh, and there's just, there hadn't been anybody running up there. There was no grip up there. Marcus Ambrose started on the pole. He's led the first three laps here today. Your top five under caution, Casey Kane, Greg Biffle, Matt Kenseth, and Kevin Harvick. We talked throughout Countdown to Green. We mentioned off the top of the show here, there will be a competition caution at lap 20. Drivers certainly could pit here under caution, but they cannot fuel the race car. And, and we heard Kyle Busch talk about it on Countdown to Green and on pre-race that the competition caution was good because these guys had built in some adjustments to these cars because of the tires and because of the rain. So NASCAR, that is a good call to let these guys, so people don't go, start getting lapped 15, 20, 30 laps into the race. It gives everybody a, an equal step up. Log on to NASCAR.com to experience TNT Race Buddy presented by Frost Brewed Coors Light, the official beer of NASCAR. Race Buddy has 10 cam reviews, special reports from Miss Coors Light and more. Lap two crash for Kurt Busch. He has come down pit road, made repairs, returned to the racetrack. David Gillen also received some damage. He has made a pit stop. You look at the cautions through 14 races in 2012, 80 of them, that's the fewest since back in 1999. Had a couple of early ones last week at Pocono. We've got an early one here, but the lights are out atop the Ford F-150 pace vehicle, and we are set to put him back under green. Once again, on the restart, Marcus Ambrose, who was the race leader, has chosen the outside lane. To his left will be Casey Kane, row two, teammates Kenseth and Biffle, Logano and Harvick on row three, Bain, Stewart, Almirola, and Clint Boyer complete the top five, top ten. And they are, they've only run a couple laps, but they got a lot more confidence right now on this restart than they did the start, because they do have, kind of have an idea what these cars feel like going down one or two. And, and I'm going to tell you something. Greg yeah. Biffle power move here to the outside of Marcus Ambrose. But we saw on that restart yes, a, little a little bit. bit oh, my gosh. Woo. You see Marcus get back down in the groove where the rubber is and just kind of power up off that corner. Interesting that we have seen guys on the outside this early in the race. It, it, but, it, but it's interesting that Biffle got a little higher than where he wanted to be. He was just a little bit, so he had to, had to give up that position. But if we saw that restart, you almost saw the nine car spin the tires and wiggle a little bit. I think that's why that inside lane is not as good right now, and it's not because as you anticipate, when that guy goes and you go the gas, you're spinning worse than he yeah, is. And I think that's what happened to Harvick, Harvick on the start. Exactly. Yeah. Casey Kane lost some ground on that restart. You got me just looking oh, right now. Ambrose Kyle. sideways off the corner. I was just going to say, there's a lot of loose race cars. A lot right of loose race cars. And everybody thought they would be. You know, I don't think there was anybody that we spoke to uh, in the countdown to green or the pre-race that didn't think this thing was going to be loose as we see Biffle just power to, to the inside of Ambrose because he loses that momentum getting up off turn two. Biffle, the new race leader and the man that went to victory lane a week ago, Joey Logano right in the hip pocket of Marcus Ambrose. Right behind him, Casey Kane. Working lap seven of 200 here at Michigan. And off the pace, Trevor Bain. Team that's had so much success here at Michigan. The Wood Brothers, 11 victories and time for the fourth. All the gauges read good. I think the sign is dead. Plug wire, something's off. I think it was Adam that was bringing up that could be some engine problems today, Kyle. Yeah, I think these guys the had a lot of laps on their engines. I don't, I don't know. Come on now. I, we don't know how many laps the 21 had on this engine. Yeah. We are joking about that. But he says that, you know, plug wire or something like that. If you remember when the 99 car went out to qualify of Carl Edwards, the reason he started in the back, the secondaries didn't open up. Um, and it, or basically, if you had a carburetor, that's the way it would be. But his, his throttle linkage was messed up a little bit. That's why he only run 170, 80 miles an hour Whoa. and they cut it off. That? Look, I don't know if that was Truex or somebody jumped way up the racetrack there. Trevor Bain was running seventh when he had the engine problems. He's on pit road now. What do you see with Ryan Newman, Larry? Well, what I'm seeing is a man that's on a mission going to the front. Remember, had to go to the rear of the field because of an engine change. We're only on lap seven with three caution laps. He's already cracked the top 20 up to 19th. 
So Ryan Newman making up some ground on track. Here's what teammate known or Tony Stewart was saying prior to today's race on the radio. Everybody else has figured this tire out but me, so I'll uh, I'll keep digging with it, keep working on it. I'll find something today here, so bear with me for a little while till I figure it out here. That's confidence, isn't it? Saw the big movers in this race, Ryan Newman, Kyle Busch among those that are moving forward quickly in the early portion of this afternoon's event. What's the latest on the 14, Marty? Well, as you heard Tony say, they were not very happy with this tire change. They felt like they had a winning race car with the old tire, Adam, but with this new tire, it really threw them for a loop. Tony told me I never got comfortable with the tire. And what happened just a moment ago, he came on the radio and said, hey guys, this car's actually pretty good right now. And Josh Wise gonna bring out our second caution of the day. Much like Trevor Bain, he's up in smoke in the 26 car here. This is a, this kind of works in Johnson's favor, and, and you know we talked about those guys starting in the back. You know they get to run a, a few green laps and then making up all this track time because of the caution. Yes. So it's working in their favor. The guys starting the back. Second caution of the day: Greg Biffle, Marcus Ambrose, Joey Logano, Casey Kane, and Matt Kins at the top five. Welcome back to Michigan. Live coverage of the Quicken Loans 400. The American Ethanol Sweepstakes is happening now. Log on to NASCAR.com slash AE Sweeps for your chance to win one of three Chevrolet Silverados. American Ethanol, American grown, American made, powering NASCAR. Under caution for the second time today, Josh Wise lost an engine. And this will not serve as the competition caution that NASCAR is planning on at lap 20. A couple of drivers came down pit road here under caution. We'll tell those stories when we come back to Michigan International Speedway on TNT.
The Quicken Loans 400 on TNT is presented by Quicken Loans, engineered to amaze, and brought to you in part by Sprint. Avoid a data dilemma with truly unlimited data. Go to sprint.com forward slash speed. By Toyota Care, caring for you and your car. By American Ethanol Sweepstakes, enter for your chance to win one of three Chevy Silverados. And by Red Lobster, it's back. Red Lobster's four course seafood feast, just $14.99. 13 laps complete at Michigan. Greg Biffle is the race leader. Marcus Ambrose, Joey Logano, Casey Kane, Matt Kenseth are your top five. Jimmy Johnson started at the rear today with an engine change. They made a pit stop here under caution. Right now, the five time champion scored in 36th. Here's what he said on the radio to his crew a moment ago. I'm much faster than these guys. The groove is so narrow that uh, I'm a little cautious, you know, reluctant to do much. I thought I had something working and then you know, way, way, way sideways. So, but the car feels good. And, and that's interesting because I think we've seen that a couple of times in the race already that the, gear, the groove is narrow, 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 and you can't get out. We saw the 51 get outside the groove. We saw the 16 try the nine on the outside and then give the position back. They just don't want to press it right now. NASCAR on TNT back at Michigan. Several drivers have pitted here under caution. Dale Jr. Among those, also Jimmy Johnson took four tires. Time now for our Ram. No guts, no glory. Risk versus reward. Johnson pits here, gets four tires. Can he manage some strategy when the competition caution comes out? Gas and go will probably pick up about, what, 20 spots, 25 spots? You would think it would. So that, that's probably a pretty good strategy if that's what his strategy is. He's already said, we heard his audio, I got a pretty good car. I just can't get around these guys and I don't want to chance it. So that would get him positions without him having to pass anybody on the racetrack. No doubt Jimmy Johnson, Chad Canals have that no guts, no glory attitude. One of the other drivers that came down pit road, the man that restarts alongside Johnson, Landon Castle. In the front row, Greg Biffle, Marcus Ambrose. That's Biffle, the race leader in the outside lane. We'll put lap 16 on the board as we go back green.
Defo got it done that time. Denny Hamlin got hung out a bit in that outside lane, lost several positions. See him there on the outside of Jeff Burton making it three wide. Bobby Labonte on the inside. Man, Hamlin falling back a bit early in the run and on board with Ryan Newman who continues to drive forward. You see, Burton got up there way high in that gray and boy, he lost a lot of ground and he continues to lose a lot of ground. Like Kyle said a little bit earlier, you know, the groove is down low and you can see a lot of these guys running down at the bottom of the yes. racetrack right now. They're not as confident as running that high line yet. It'll, I think it'll come. But right now, they're all fighting for that lane and a half on the bottom. Yes. I think I asked you in Countdown to Green Wally, are we going to see the old Michigan where they fan out three and four wide? I think we've answered it. They're getting pretty aggressive. Well, the thing is, a lot of these guys are winding up there anyway because they're sliding up there. They're going down in the corners. And like you saw Burton, every time you get a car to run that high groove up, it makes it a little bit better and better. So yeah, I still think we're going to see it. And, and they're aggressive down the straightaways when you're watching it because what they're doing is they're getting to the corners and they're all slipping and sliding and somebody gets a good run and pulls out on everybody. Yeah. Yoakum. And the 39 of Ryan Newman. Look, you guys documented probably the biggest gainer so far. He's up to 16th. Newman says the car chatted the tires for about the first three or four laps after each restart. But boy, that thing is definitely a rocket. And Tony Gibson told me they felt like their car actually reacted better when NASCAR and Goodyear changed the left side tires. They were pretty confident. Riding on board here with Ryan Newman. Started 43rd because of that engine change up to 16th in the running order with 18 laps complete. We will put 19 laps on the board here, and we did get an update under that last caution when Josh Wise lost his engine that NASCAR has shifted the scheduled competition caution from lap 20 to 25. And if you're wondering what's a competition caution and why, NASCAR will do this from time to time. The reason we've got one here today, new left side tire. We had rain, so we had a green racetrack. This gives everybody an opportunity, the teams, Goodyear and NASCAR, to check these tires and make sure we don't have any problems developing. Battle for third place of the racetrack. Joey Logano's got it, and Matt Kinza coming up behind. Tell you what, Eric Almarola running inside the top 10. Marcus Ambrose started on the pole. In fact, both the RPM cars inside the top five right now. And, and um, that's the way they've been since Charlotte. If we go back to Charlotte, qualified on the front row, running the top 10 at Dover, they've just been incredibly competitive and incredibly consistent for the last three or four weeks. A lot of their success started happening when Mike Ford moved over yes. there to crew chief that 43. I saw him in the garage area the other day. I'm not sure there's anybody more focused. I mean, he walks on a beeline and he has got a plan. This is a Matt Kenseth kind of track. Long green flag runs. Patience is what you have to have to be successful. And Kenseth right where he needs to be. Fourth in the running order. Kenseth now to the inside of Joey Logano. This would be for third on the racetrack. And Logano lets him go by. Kenseth faster in the 17. Ryan Newman, we've documented, on the move today, running right behind Bobby Labonte. Let's ride on board and see what driver 39's looking like, Wally. Well, you can always kind of tell how the car's handling by watching the driver's hands on the steering wheel. And I've been kind of watching, keeping an eye on, on Ryan. And looks like his car's handling pretty well. I mean, you see him go down in here in turn one. And you can see him feeding the steering wheel, but you don't see that his hands swinging to the right, which means your car's really loose. So it looks like, like you know, I, I believe it was Matt and some of those guys talking earlier that he's making his way through the field. It looks like he's got a pretty good handling car by that driver shot. See Brad Keselowski sneaking into the picture. He is scored right now in the 17th position. That's Bobby Labonte in front of Newman in that bright green and blue car. And there goes Keselowski to the inside of Newman. Newman made the early charge and now drifting just a bit as Keselowski makes the move to the inside. And Keselowski, one of those drivers, he told this on Countdown to Green, he said, our car wasn't where we wanted it to be on the original tire. They gave us those new left sides and our car reacted. Brad now finds himself 16th in the running order. Updating the progress of some of those drivers that started in the back and pitted there at lap 11. Jimmy Johnson up to 23rd. As Tony Stewart looks to make a move on Eric Almirola for position. Dale Jr.'s 27th, Jeff Gordon 26th, and Carl Edwards, who 
had issues in qualifying yesterday, now finds himself closing on the top 20. He is 25th. Tony Stewart started in the eighth spot, took seventh away from Casey Kane, and now opening the door for sixth on Eric Almirola in that yellow 43. Can't quite get there into the corner. Well, he's got a good run right there. And when you look at the diverse background of Tony Stewart in his racing career, you got to love him at a place like this that's got new asphalt and there are a bunch of question marks. And you got to like this guy too, Mark Martin in the 55 to the inside of Kevin Harvick for position. Martin has won here five times at Michigan. You see that 29 get yes. sideways, getting in there. Yeah. And, and that's, what, that's the worst place to be loose at, at Michigan is loose getting in. And that's what look, Harvick looks like right Caution's there. Out. Caution's out. Caution's out. These guys are going to be out. making a lot of adjustments. These guys that are loose are going to be making a lot of adjustments. This is a great time to have that caution. The competition caution coming at lap 25, or with 25 laps complete, we just put 26 on the scoreboard. Your top 10, Greg Biffle, Marcus Ambrose, Matt Kenseth, Joey Logano, Eric Almarola. Tony Stewart unable to make the pass of Almarola is sixth. Casey Kane seventh. Mark Martin, Kevin Harvick, and Clint Boyer make up the top 10. This will be the first time drivers will be able to fuel their race cars. When NASCAR sets a competition caution, the rules say you can't get fuel prior to that time, although you are allowed to come down pit road if you like. Teams to keep an eye on. Teams that have already come down pit road today, they did so earlier. Landon Castle did it at lap 11. So did Dale Earnhardt Jr. Kurt Busch made a pit stop at lap 15. And the big one is Jimmy Johnson. He came down and got tires at lap 11. They're scored 22nd. We thought they may play some strategy. We'll find out right here. And one thing about Jimmy Johnson is that he's got, he said he had a good race car. So if these guys just take fuel and go, they can make up a lot of ground on these other guys because there's going to be a lot of other cars making some serious adjustments. And how about this? You, you change an engine, you go to the back, and within 30 laps, you find yourself at the front of the field. That, that is huge in regard to how you manage the rest of your day. But it's, it's huge in how they manage the first 25 laps of the race, too. It, they didn't just fall into <laughs> coming from the back to the front. They, they had a, a plan. Here they come, Ralph. Yep, and the first one in is going to be Matt Kenseth. He's got the first pit box off of turn number four. They're going to add a little tape to the car and make a slight chassis adjustment. He's away, Chris Neville. Greg Biffle took the lead on lap six. He says the car right now just a little bit free. Matt Pugh should just want him to do two tires and fuel on this step. He's not going to make any adjustments. Matt. Marcus Ambrose, fill your screen. Chris, it's going to be fuel only. Todd Parrott told me this morning this was the plan the entire time. He just said absolutely no grip. Kids will almost beat Marcos Ambrose off pit road, but I think that first pit stall will pay off for Ambrose, and he wins off pit road, Adam. Yes, he did. Kenseth up to second. Logano gains a spot. Big mover Mark Martin and Kyle Busch will reset the field after a break.
NASCAR on TNT back at Michigan. Won't be long before we go back under the green flag. Driver to keep your eye on, Kyle Busch. He's one of the eight drivers that pitted here under caution that took no tires. Good move for him after starting 34th. He has jumped to sixth in the running order. Pit crew feels like they're doing exactly what they need to do. If you want more NASCAR content, go to twitter.com slash hashtag NASCAR. The one to go signal being given now. Let's reset the top five after pit stops. Matt Kenseth, no tires, is the race leader. Joining him on the front row for the restart will be Marcus Ambrose. He too took no tires. Same for Joey Logano and Mark Martin. Then you got Kyle Busch and Greg Biffle. The first of the drivers inside the top 10 that took tires here, Tony Stewart. He's going to restart seventh. And the other driver that took tires under caution will be Greg Biffle, who when we go green will be in the sixth position. And Kevin Harvick's made a couple of pit stops here. Tough break for this race team who started second today. Yeah, that's his third time down pit road um, under this caution. So obviously whatever adjustments they were having to make, Wally pointed it out earlier. That thing rolled in the corner sideways, wiggled, and he lost a ton of ground. We saw the 15 of Clint Boyer come up on him. But that, whatever adjustments they had to make obviously were time-consuming adjustments. They're big adjustments. Uh, yeah, big yeah. adjustments. That's big adjustments uh, because he came in on all three laps of this, of this caution. Eight of the top ten. No tires. You guys surprised? I, it surprised me. I guess it surprised me. It's 29 laps, and they really haven't run that many green. But I did think that more of the guys were going to take some tires. Yeah. On that I, I really did, too, just to get a good read on where the tires were. Because we've heard these guys say, you know, scuffs or putting a cycle on them was not bad. Well, 15, 20 laps on a cycle, and that's basically all they had over those first 25 laps because they had cautions. Remember, it was not a bad cycle on a set. This was all about taking the tires off and making sure they didn't. They didn't yeah, have and nobody, took them, nobody took them off. So I guess NASCAR <laughs> can't look at that. And they are going to have another competition caution at lap 50. You cannot fuel your car until then. We're going to go back green as we complete lap 30 here at Michigan. Matt Kenseth, Marcus Ambrose out front here. Ambrose in that number one pit stall. Great pit work, and now the fight begins down into turn one for the race lead. And you can Ooh. see they're fighting a lot more than they did at the beginning of the race. So, the, you know, the track is coming in. Yeah, you see, that time the inside lane got a really good start. Matt Kenseth almost pulled him down into turn one. But Matt's car jumped up a little bit. He had to check up out of it. You see uh, Ambrose go to the front. Jimmy Johnson getting out of line. He restarted back in the 20th spot, so he slowly but surely is coming to the front today. Again, Jimmy talked about how good his car was. He didn't want to chance it, but I think he meant he didn't want to chance it on the outside. Uh, but he's, he was all the way on that white line going in turn three, so he feels a lot more comfortable about where he's at. Keep an eye on Greg Biffle and Tony Stewart. They're the drivers that did take tires at lap 27 when they pitted of the drivers that restarted inside the top 10. And here comes Matt Kenseth knocking on the door for the race lead. Inside of Marcus Ambrose, Kenseth goes to the point at Michigan. This is an impressive early run by Matt because Matt tweeted last night uh, after that final practice that they had lost the balance on that car and he was hoping that Jimmy and those guys found some magic and some of the adjustments that they needed to make. So I don't think from reading his tweets and stuff that he was very optimistic last night, but obviously uh, they made they went the right way. Tony Stewart just ran around Kyle Busch. He's now sixth, Marty. Adam, as you mentioned, two tires on that stop for Tony Stewart, who was surprisingly fast earlier with that race car. And here's what he had to say on the radio after a little focused in that first run. No prisoners the rest of the day. Zero. And guys, Tony clearly moving forward. Those two tires not hurting at all. And happy with that race car. A happy smoke means a happy 14 months, Adam. Another driver that's got to be happy in the early part of this race is Mark Martin. He just went around Joey Logano. He's up to third in the running order. And while Marcus Ambrose lost the lead to Matt Kenseth, he's not letting Matt get away. As you go on board with Stewart here. You look at 2012 for the defending champion, Tony Stewart. Some highs wow. and some lows as he works over Joey Logano here. And as loose as these cars are, 
yeah. when you drive on somebody like that, especially getting into the corner, it makes the car you're pulling up on even more loose. Even more loose. We saw it yesterday in the Nationwide race uh, with Dylan and, and when Danica spun around. But Tony really is rolling into the corner and through the center free. You saw how much he gained on Joy Logano getting into turn three the lap before. He just closed up into the center, picked up the throttle, not full, just a little bit, and really closed up on Joy and got that run on him down the front stretch. And I made the point earlier, these are the kinds of days that favor a guy like Smoke who's been everywhere and driven everything on every kind of racetrack. It's got to help, doesn't it, Kyle? Yeah, no, I, I think it helps. I, I think the more experience you have on different facilities or different types of surfaces and stuff, it's good. But at the same time, let's be honest, we've seen Tony go to some of these places this year and it looked like he had gone there for the first time. That's how bad they ran. And I think he and Steve have worked really hard to get back to where they were when the season started, when he won two out of the first four or five races. Uh, I think they lost their way a little, a little bit there. Denny Hamlin to the inside of Jimmy Johnson. That's for the 17th position. And back behind them in 28th is Kevin Harvick, who made multiple pit stops under caution a few moments ago. Ralph, what's the story there? Adam, it was three stops. He came in for the first one, just a routine stop. Then this fell off. This is a dust cap that goes in the center of the tire like this. Very rare that one of these would fall off. You can see how they're fastened on to the car right here. When that fell off, they had to come back in, put the new one back on, and then they came down a third time just to complete tightening up the car. Pretty rare, Kyle and Wally, to see one of these come off the race car. Yeah, that I don't is. Think I ever have. Yeah, I, I've seen them come off the rear when the axles will beat them out. Right. You know what I mean? We'll beat, we'll just constantly beat on them and beat them loose. But uh, one on the front, and that's where they appear to be working. One on the front like that, obviously, it, it did, doesn't appear to be that it was tight when the, when the race started and worked its way loose. NASCAR Spring Cup Racing from Michigan International Speedway is brought to you by AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network. AT&T, rethink possible. And by McDonald's, I'm loving it. 
Happy Father's Day, everybody, from all of us here at NASCAR on TNT. If you're just joining us and saying what, only 43 laps have gone by. Well, the reason we had some rain move through the Irish Hills of Michigan early afternoon. We dried things out. It's gorgeous now. The race leader, Matt Kenseth, Marcus Ambrose, Mark Martin, Greg Biffle, and Tony Stewart are the top five. Saw a spirited battle there between Brad Keselowski and Eric Almarola for the final spot inside the top 10. So as we work on lap 43, Larry, what do you notice? Well, one thing I do notice when I look at our top 10 drivers right now, Adam, four of them did change tires. I just think the reason the other drivers did not worry about changing tires, they only had 15 laps on their tires, and they know they've got that cost at lap 50. And remember what Greg Biffle told us in the countdown to green, these things are treacherous when you first put them on with lower air pressure. You know, something we have not talked about a lot today, but appears in some different situations to be playing a role is the draft here at Michigan. A lot of suck up on the bumper of the guy in front of you. Yeah, well, you're running the speeds <laughs> these guys are. Uh, you're definitely going to see, and, and you always have, have seen it at, at Michigan. Another thing is, this place, with, when it gets cloudy, it changes the racetrack. We saw it sunny earlier. Now, all of a sudden, we got half the track is, is, is you know, dark in the shade. It changes the racetrack. So, I mean, these guys are going to be earning their paycheck today trying to get these cars to handle. Hey, Chris, six laps away from that competition caution at lap 50. What do you make of the tires? Well, under that last caution, the 16 was one of those cars that took right side rubber. And Greg Biffle was saying, hey, let's not take rubber on this stop right before he came to pit lane. But Matt Pusha told him on the radio, I want to put tires on the car. I want to see what the right side tires look like. So I feel more confident later in this race, maybe not taking tires. Matt Pusha right now telling Greg, hey, only a couple more laps. We're probably just going to do fuel on this stop, so we'll pass these guys. Pipple's got, got a pretty strong car right there. Well, he and Tony Stewart right now fourth and fifth. And following the caution a while ago on the restart, they were the two drivers in the top ten that had taken tires. There are some others now that have jumped inside the top ten since the restart that also took tires back at lap 27 and two names that jump out to me in the top 10 Brad Keselowski and AJ Allmendinger the teammates at Team Penske as Dale Jr. goes to the inside of Ryan Newman for 12th Matt and the team that probably was most affected by the tire change Adam was the 88 of Dale Earnhardt Jr. It's been a struggle ever since the swap over it was real edgy at the beginning of the race they pitted back on lap 11 they took the left rear off pushed a spring rubber in and made a track bar adjustment trying to get better balance the car was still tight back on lap 27 they made two more changes. Steve Letard asked him back on lap 41, have we made inroads? And Larry Mack, Dale Jr. said, yep, the ballast is really good. Yeah, Matt, I don't know if he's feeling like he made gains, but when I go back, remember, he started in the 15th position. He had fell out of the top 25, and I think with that change they made there on lap 11 and then two tires on lap 27, he's actually fighting his way to the top 10. What a turnaround for Dale Earnhardt Jr. And you know what's amazing, Larry? He restarted 23rd at lap 31. So after that cycle of pit stops at lap 27, Dale Earnhardt Jr. has put the whip on the rear of his race car, and he is driving it to the front. Clint Boyer having a nice day. He's inside the top 10 in seventh. Told you about Kyle Busch. Picked up five positions on that cycle of pit stops a while ago. He stabilized in the eighth spot. Eric Almarola, who spent time in the top five, is now dropped outside the top ten. He is 11th. And that's the next driver Dale Earnhardt Jr. will see on track. And the leaders are Whoa. in traffic. Oh, nicely done. Kins wow. to the Hold outside off. of Ken Oh, look how sideways he is. That was cool. <laughs> Man, that was good. Ken's unhappy there. Is that what you read into that? Hey, that was a good move on yeah. Ambrose's part. Am Ambr the, when Matt went to the outside, obviously Ambrose thought his car would stick, and it did stick until he started up off the corner, and it had just enough of that shove in it that it slid up the racetrack. That was Ken Schrader. taking a look right now. It was Ken Schrader in the 32 that they had to drive around. Ambrose has taken over the lead, and as Wally pointed out, Mark Martin is there, and so is Greg Biffle. Biffle. Yeah, that closed him up. NASCAR calling for a competition caution at lap 50. And the next time the leaders come around, we will complete 50 laps, the one quarter mark of this afternoon's 400 mile event at Michigan. A 
almost sounds like the old days where it's uh, like yeah, you're kind of playing with yeah, it. You're playing with yeah. it. You're not just flat into it getting up like we saw in practice all week long and like we saw in qualifying. Here's what's interesting. Matt Kenseth leading, Marcus Ambrose right with him. Marcus Ambrose gets the lead, clean air, checks out. It's definitely important. Definitely, you know, being out front, you'll always see the guy out front just a little bit quicker most of the time. All right, yellow's out, is, competition there's yellow. And there's our competition caution, the second one of the day. Fourth caution overall as you look at top speeds from this afternoon. Matt Kenseth dominated this stint in the race until he got into lap traffic. Tony Raines in the 10, Ken Schrader in the 32. Kenseth tries the outside, Ambrose on the inside. Well, Kenseth had to check up a little bit when he went out on the high side, and Ambrose had a pretty good run going. You see him slide it up there. Yeah. It pushed, and, and you see him, once he gets up there, he comes back down the racetrack to get out of the way because he knew that was his fault. You know, I just made a move, and I didn't give him enough room, and I came back down the racetrack to get out of his way, which was, was pretty good. The other good thing when you saw that, they're passing Kenny Schrader, who's probably got more laps on this racetrack than anybody else. Kenny just held his line, and that's important from a trust factor for a Matt Kenseth, Kenseth or a Marcus Ambrose to know that guy that they're passing is not going to do something crazy like we saw in the, the Le Mans race um, yeah. <laughs> when the Ferrari Many cut times. down on the Toyota. Yeah. But, but you know what I'm saying? I mean, there's a trust factor out there that all these guys have in each other. Tony Range got the free pass under caution. He was the first car one lap down. Last time they pitted, lap 27. That was a competition caution put out by NASCAR. A number of drivers elected to take no tires. So what strategies will play out here? Pit road is open, and this cycle going to happen at lap 52, Ralph. Matt Kenseth has a bit of a vibration in the right front. He also needs help getting that car to turn in as he makes his piss out there. Just going to take right side tires, make an air pressure adjustment, take a little air out of those tires, Chris Neville. Ralph, well, initially the 16 crew was just going to do fuel, try and gain some track position, but Greg Biffle saying he's sliding the nose, and then the car is snap loose. So right now they're going to do right side tires, try and tighten that car up a little bit. Marty? Chris, planned from the beginning of the day, Marco Sambros will come down pit road, take two tires here. He said it lacks a little bit of grip early in the run, but that's it. He did have a small vibration, just like Matt Kenseth a little bit earlier. He will not win the race off pit road this time, Matt. And Kyle Busch's service already complete. His car just would not turn when he would try to get back in the gas. So they made an air pressure change in the right front to free it up. Adam? Greg Biffle won the race off pit road. Mark Martin, Brad Keselowski, Marcus Ambrose, Eric Almirola, the top five.
Welcome back to live coverage of the Quicken Loans 400 at Michigan International Speedway. Marcus Ambrose, Greg Biffle both running inside the top five. When everyone came to caution, both drivers took two tires, and here you see the comparison of their time spent on pit road. Yeah, it's a pretty, you, you look at the total. Yeah, total is pretty significant when you start looking at that. And, and count down the green, we did the thing, Wally and I, on, on pit road speed. And I want to go back after after Matt adds on the 18 here. Matt? And KP, the 18 of Kyle Busch is coming back down pit road for his third visit. Before that stop, he got into the wall a little bit. A little more significant cosmetic damage than they had expected. That's why they bit the bullet, tried to fix it now, brought him back down pit road for one more chance just to polish it up a little bit on the right rear corner. You know, and, and Kyle Busch is one that seemed pretty pleased with his car um, early on there when, when they did an interview with him and, and uh, countdown in a pre-race. I want to go back to the 29 and the dust cap. What it, what the dust cap does for these guys, for people out there that don't understand what that piece of metal was, as the hub goes up onto the spindle, and you put the inner bearing in, and then the hub, and then the outer bearing in, and you tighten it up, you you have you pack it full of grease. The the bearing is full of grease, and then you pack that full of bit of grease. Put the dust cap on to keep dirt out of the bearings. Let's update our AT&T Fastest Driver Challenge. Greg Biffle has the fastest time so far here today. Remember, text FAST to 34763 or visit attfastestdriver.com. You could win 4Gs just by playing. Brought to you by the nation's largest 4G network, AT&T Rethink Possible. We're going to get the restart as we complete lap 55. Greg Biffle is the race leader, and he, like we've seen throughout the day, elects to restart in that outside lane. Mark Martin, strong, as we finish that last run. We'll restart second. Brad Keselowski, Marcus Ambrose, and Eric Almirola back in the top five. He restarts alongside Dale Earnhardt, Jr. You know why it's going to be big to win the race off pit road? Lane selection. That outside lane, huge today on restarts, Wally. Yeah, and Biffle got a, a good one there. It's going to be interesting to see if he just checks out. I mean, he's been watching his times. <clears throat> he has been laying down some really good laps. Now he's out front. See if any anybody's got anything for him. J Jimmy Johnson also has been running some very fast lap times, and that's better traffic. Johnson's 18th after starting at the back today. Saw Martin Truex Jr. starting to come through the field. He is 12. Maybe some drivers to keep an eye on on this run. The ones that took four tires in that last pit stop. Tony Stewart did, Joey Logano, Casey Kane, Kyle Busch. Matt Kenseth, strong on that last run, but lost some ground on pit road. He's seventh right now. What's he saying on the radio? Yeah, we got to figure this out, Jimmy, here. That was, uh, man, that was bad. I thought that play would have been the fast way. We should have saved two seconds on that with a full tank. Yeah, we definitely didn't save any time. We lost uh, six spots, and 55 got me by about two or three seconds. There. At least we sat there longer than him. got to figure that out. I know last week it was my fault. I was in the stall long, but stop. So we got to get this figured out and stall and get it done quicker because so you're not going to be able to pass today. And, and that key. I mean, as hard as it is, everybody's running so good right now, it is difficult to pass when you give up that kind of time in pit lane. There's nothing more frustrating to a driver than that. Nothing. Well, and Wally did add to that story and talking to some of the crew down here, they decided at the end to go with a full tank of fuel, but they only took two tires. So that's where some of the confusion was. When they took that full tank of full tank of fuel, they might as well have gone ahead and put four tires on. And that's a bit of where the frustration was with Matt. Correct. Yep. Yes. That's a good call, Ralph, because that, yeah, if you're going to put gas in it, you may as well put four tires on it. But you know, and we talk about it every week. All the other broadcasters talk about it. It's the most disheartening thing in the world to work your rear end off for a few laps. Work your rear end off for a few laps, make that pass, and then give it up on pit road. You said, Wally, on the restart, it'll be interesting to see if once Biffle gets the lead, he pulls away. The answer, no. Marcus Ambrose going nowhere. 
And as he got up alongside Biffle for the top spot, it allowed Mark Martin to close a bit. And Dale Earnhardt Jr., who restarted sixth a moment ago, is fourth, and he's right in the middle of this mix. They're not out of the gas long. L not long at all. Not long at all. I mean, they let it roll down, and just when it settles in, they pick back up the gas and drive it through the center. Jimmy Johnson, 15th right now, Chris, but maybe some, some concerns in the 48 camp? Yeah, right before he came into pit lane, he told the team that the car is awesome, but it's a little bit loose in traffic. However, they took the right side tires off that car, and the right rear had blisters all the way around the center of the tire. Now, this team was having to deal with a lot of blisters on the left side of the car in practice all day Friday. Now that they've got harder left side tires, that issue that they're dealing with, uh, with the handling of that car, it looks like it might be migrating to the right side. Chris, can I, when, when he pitted early in the race and changed tires, did they put stickers on during that time or did they put scuffs on, do you know? Kyle, I don't know. I, I know they just did two tires on that stop. I don't know if it was stickers or scuffs. Yes. All right, thank you, man. A, a lot of times, and Larry can speak to this, uh, you know, as we come back from break, Larry can probably speak to this. A lot of times, that one heat cycle will keep a tire from blistering because it hardens it up and it changes the compound just enough. The cat in the hat, no scratch. If we get a late caution, you know why it's going to be big to win the race off pit road? Lane selection. That outside lane, huge today on restarts, Wally. Yeah, and Piffle got a, a good one there. It's going to be interesting to see if he just checks out. I mean, he's been watching his times. <clears throat> he has been laying down some really good laps. Now he's out front. See if any, anybody's got anything for him. J Jimmy Johnson also has been running some very fast lap times, and that's better traffic. Johnson's 18th after starting at the back today. Saw Martin Truex Jr. starting to come through the field. He is 12. Maybe some drivers to keep an eye out on this run. The ones that took four tires in that last pit stop. Tony Stewart did, Joey Logano, Casey Kane, Kyle Busch. Matt Kenseth, strong on that last run, but lost some ground on pit road. He's seventh right now. What's he saying on the radio? Yeah, we got to figure this out, Jimmy, here. That's, uh, man, that was bad. I thought that play would have been the fast play. We should have saved two seconds on that with a full tank. Yeah, we definitely didn't save any time. We lost uh, six spots, and 55 got me by about two or three seconds. There. At least three seconds there longer than him. Got to figure that out. I know last week it was my fault. I was in the stall long, but stop. We got to get this figured out. Stall and get it done quicker because you're not going to be able to pass today. And that key. I mean, <clears throat> as hard as it is, everybody's running so good right now. It is difficult to pass when you give up that kind of time in pit lane. To, there's nothing more frustrating to a driver than that. Nothing. Well, and Wally, to add to that story and talking to some of the crew down here, they decided at the end to go with a full tank of fuel, but they only took two tires. So that's where some of the confusion was. When they took that full tank of full tank of fuel, they might as well have gone ahead and put four tires on, and that's a bit of where the frustration was with Matt. Correct. Yep. Yes. That's a good call, Ralph, because that's yeah, if you're going to put gas in it, you may as well put four tires on it. But you know, and we talk about it every week. All the other broadcasters talk about it. It's the most disheartening thing in the world to work your rear end off for a few laps. Work your rear end off for a few laps, make that pass, and then give it up on pit road. You said, Wally, on the restart, it'll be interesting to see if once Biffle gets the lead, he pulls away. The answer, no. Marcus Ambrose going nowhere. And as he got up alongside Biffle for the top spot, it allowed Mark Martin to close a bit. And Dale Earnhardt Jr., who restarted sixth a moment ago, is fourth, and he's right in the middle of this mix. They're not out of the gas long. L not long at all. Not long at all. I mean, they let it roll down, and just when it settles in, they pick back up the gas and drive it through the center. Jimmy Johnson, 15th right now, Chris, but maybe some, some concerns in the 48 camp? Yeah, right before he came into pit lane, he told the team that the car is awesome, but it's a little bit loose in traffic. However, they took the right side tires off that car, and the right rear had blisters all the way around the center of the tire. Now, this team was having to deal with a lot of blisters on the left side of the car in practice all day Friday. Now that they've got harder left side tires, that issue that they're dealing with, uh, with the handling of that car, it looks like it might be migrating to the right side. 
Chris, can I when when he pitted early in the race and changed tires, did they put stickers on during that time or did they put scuffs on? Do you know? Kyle, I don't know. I, I know they just did two tires on that stuff. I don't know if it was stickers or scuffs. Yes. All right, thank you, man. A lot of times, and Larry can speak to this, you know, as we come back from break, Larry can probably speak to this. A lot of times, that one heat cycle will keep a tire from blistering because that hardens it up and it changes the compound just enough. The cat in the hat, no stranger to success at Michigan. Jack Roush has won here 11 times, and his man, Greg Biffle, out front this afternoon in the Quicken Loans 400. Dark Knight Rises partner to create a custom paint scheme for the Diet Mountain Dew number 88. And if you're a Dew and Dark Knight fan, you can go inside Gotham City at DewGothamCity.com where you can gain unprecedented access into Gotham City, including never seen before content. The Dark Knight not only rising, it's moving to the front. Dale Earnhardt Jr. closing on second place. Marcus Ambrose, your race leader, is Greg Biffle. But for more, on Junior, who's trying to snap that 143 race winless streak. Let's go to Larry McReynolds at our Toyota Torque Car. What's up, Larry? Adam, this is why I think Dale Earnhardt Jr. is in the best shape that he's been in in a long, long time. You think about it, he started this race in the 15th position. He dropped like a rock all the way out to the 27th spot. Steve Letarte, lap 11, the car was too loose. Junior could not think about putting the throttle down. Steve Letarte called him in, they pulled the left rear tire off, they took this spring rubber, and they inserted it right here in the left rear spring. That stiffened the rate of the spring now when Junior puts the throttle down. He can stay in it, and he's cracked the top five. You know, it's interesting. Came here on Thursday for two three-hour test sessions. Junior, one of the two drivers to go over 200 miles per hour in both sessions. Quick here in both practices on Friday as NASCAR began the official race weekend. Then they got a curveball with his tire, and yes. Junior, one of the guys that wasn't sure, as you see Marcus Ambrose going side-by-side -side with Greg Biffle for the race lead. Junior adjusting nicely to change 
That 88 is going to be right and there in the yep, picture right here there. Here he is. Because he catches that draft down the back stretch. Oh, Junior slides up the race track. Oh, and there's Junior in the second. But yep. Junior was the most vocal guy after that last practice last night that he didn't like the way his car was. Let's get a report from Matt on Dale Jr.'s car. Adam, you saw Larry Mack talking about pushing in that spring rubber. Dramatic change for Junior. Then a slight track bar adjustment. The car has absolutely come to life. A little tight in the center at both ends of the racetrack as he works all over the nine of Ambrose on the inside. But the biggest thing, he says the groove is starting to widen out a little bit. It was so narrow and edgy earlier on. 88 moving to the front. And Samantha's got it right. The Batmobile has come to life. Put Dale Earnhardt Ooh. Jr. on the point at Michigan, but he wiggles off a of turn four. That was Ambrose gave him a little bit of a break there. Yes, he did. But that was a power move up off turn two and down the back stretch. He just powered by him. That, he, that's been impressive watching him come up through there. You know, it's interesting. After Dover, where he finished inside the top five, he was very quick to point out, we're going to some tracks where history says we may not be very good. We have got to get our act together for the summer. Dale Earnhardt Jr. answering the bell. Solid run all week last week at Pocono. Top 10 finish and leading today here at Michigan. And Greg Biffle, who was leading a moment ago, Chris, has dropped back to third. Yeah, Adam just saw him slide back to third, now possibly going to slide back to fourth as Mark Martin's on his tail. He just radioed crew chief Matt Pucia, said, hey, the car is way too loose. I can barely hang on to it right now. Matt Pucia radioed back, hey, just hang on the best you can. This next stop, I'll get you tuned up. Party. in front of him is Marcos Ambrose and actually kind of an odd thing these cars love clean air but Marcos said his car is actually a little too loose when it's out by himself you know Wally sometimes you'll make these cars adjusted for running in traffic and then when it gets in clean air it handles completely different well actually you're right Marty if he, if he could get close up to another car that makes his car push which kind of balances the car out Kyle and I were looking at we we're talking about that earlier on the break that it looked like his car was a handful when he was out front, but it looked better when he was tucked up behind somebody. I know it's early, but Dale Earnhardt Jr. is out front at Michigan trying to do what he did here four years ago. Nice save off the corner, 88.
Let's take an inside look and get unlimited access to the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series brought to you by the NASCAR Sprint Cup mobile app and truly unlimited data on the Sprint Network. Jimmy Johnson, big mover today, 42nd to 13th. Get live in-car audio and real-time stats on the NASCAR Sprint Cup mobile Android app. Only from Sprint. Learn more at Sprint.com slash speed. 11 lead changes today among six different leaders. Dale Earnhardt Jr., the man on point right now, grabbed the top spot from Marcus Ambrose a handful of laps ago. Marcus Ambrose, Greg Biffle, Mark Martin, Tony Stewart are the top five. Matt Kenseth, who had some issues on pit road a moment ago, is sixth. Brad Keselowski is seventh. Not sure that we ever really talked about Juan Pablo Montoya, who picked up 12 spots when he came down pit road a while ago. He's in the top yeah. 10, as are Clint Boyer yes. and Jeff Gordon. And we're seeing some green flag pit stops here. Denny Hamlin coming down for service. Ryan Truex, or Martin Truex Jr. also coming down at lap 78. High schedule for the 11 of Denny Hamlin. Tight from the center off. That's been his biggest issue all race. Just trying to find more grip. Last time everyone pitted under caution at lap 52. That's 27 laps on this run. The lead for Dale Earnhardt Jr. 1.1 seconds over second place Marcus Ambrose. Jimmy Johnson, Jeff Gordon both started outside the top 20. Gordon because he didn't qualify well. Johnson on an engine change. Gordon is in the top 10 in 10th and Johnson right behind him at 11th. And Carl Edwards starting to make some things happen. Junior's really been the first guy who's driven to the front, taken the lead, and driven away. Yep. The other guys, as we, as we saw, the 16 car of Biffle, or the 17 of Kenseth, or the 9 of Marcus Ambrose, when you look at it, they could just maintain. A.J. Allmendinger spent oh, a lot yeah. of time in the top 10. He comes down to make a pit stop, and while he's there, we get a caution for debris. A lot of damage on that right rear of the 22. I don't... I don't Obviously know got in the wall or something, but and don't know if it's a crush panel or something out of that race car that that's that has caused the debris on the racetrack. You can see it just kind of sticking out there to the right. Almendinger spent a lot of time inside the top ten. There you see some foam blowing around on the back straightaway. Well, that's out of probably Almendinger's car. Right, yeah, yeah. Wonder where that foam came from. That's that's <laughs> that's the, here we go right and here. Here we see him. Well, it's already kind of no, laying it's there. Already there. That's um that's interesting on where that came from. Well, they've um, been a lap before. Yeah. If he has, I, don't, I can't tell if he has a damage there or not. Well, you'd think we would have been able to see that, though, with the way it's. Well, they're saying it, it came out of the safer barrier, and, not from a race car. Yeah, and it, at certain angles, you can see there's huge pieces of foam stacked between the sulfur wall. Right, uh, if we panned on around this corner, you can see it a little bit. Huge pieces of foam stacked down in those little openings that you see right there to the left. Um, inside the wall and one of them could have just come undone and just been drawn out by the by the force of the air coming by into the middle of the racetrack and maybe that's what happened to the to the to the uh, 22 it. could have hit it yeah. yeah yeah could have hit it when the first time buyer or something here they come for pit stops, Ralph. It was no tires on the first stop for Mark Martin. Two tires on the last stop. This time it'll be four, and they'll be scuffed tires. He's been a little concerned about the left rear, and he's been a hair loose, Chris. Well, Greg Biffle still complaining that the car's way too loose. It sounds like they're going to make a wedge adjustment. Left rear, four tires on the 16. Matt, impressive segment of the race for Dale Earnhardt Jr. Is that the car was very neutral. Just trying to top him off. Caleb Hurst said he is full. Hardy. That'll be four tires for Marco Sambos. Very happy with the chassis. A little bit of wedge in the left rear. Trying to make it better when it's out front. Dale Earnhardt Jr. wins the race off pit road very easily. Ambrose will come out about six or so. Several different strategies here. Some two, some four. The battle off pit road goes to Dale Jr. Big gainers, Tony Stewart and Clint Boyer. Jeff Gordon now in the top five at Michigan.
Happy Father's Day. Thanks for joining us for the Sprint Cup Series live at Michigan International Speedway. TNT tonight. The end is just the beginning from executive producer Steven Spielberg and DreamWorks Television. Falling skies. Don't miss the two hour season premiere. It happens tonight, 9, 8 central, only on TNT. And for the latest, you can like us on Facebook. The caution came out for debris. We saw A.J. Allmendinger on pit road. He definitely had some damage. How did he get it? Here he is down the back straightaway. Right yeah, there. Just oh. clipped the wall. That's yeah. all, yeah. He just swung out when he got there. <coughs> he really kind of get an angle on that corner. Yeah. It just ran out of room. A.J. was in the 16th position when he popped the wall. I don't think that's where all that damage came from. That was just a brush. Yeah, that was just more of a brush. Something it got like. up in that fender well to do that damage that we saw when he was sitting on pit lane. Because it pulled the lower part of the quarter panel out and up. So. Right now, Almendinger one lap down in 34th. What are you seeing on tires after another pit stop, Marty? Adam, remember we told you that uh, Marcos Ambrose had a bit of a vibration. Well, this might explain it. The left front off of his car. And the first time we've really seen this this weekend, down to the cord. And you can see on the very top of the tire where they measured it with a durometer, only 17. You see across like 70, 72, only 17 on the outside. That's the left front tire for Marcos Ambrose. We also heard a right rear tire blistered for Tony Stewart. Matt. Marty, absolute shock in the 18 pit of Kyle Busch. Dover, Pocono, and now Michigan. Engine problems for the 18 of Kyle Busch. He is taking the Snickers car back to the garage. Another huge blow. But, but Kyle, taking a look at that left front, if you're going to have a tire blister, I think that's where you want to have it to blister, though. But that wasn't really a blister. I, it was yeah, worn out. That was worn out. Right. That, there's a right. difference, and that's yeah. why I was going to ask Matt or, or uh, Marty. Marty, can you hear me? I got you, KP. What's up? Marty, that tire that came off of of, Indeed. Uh, of his car, how many laps was on that tire? Now, that had been, to be fair, on since the beginning of the race. But on yes. a day where everybody had been saying, we can leave the left sides on forever, we can go a couple of stops and not change left sides, clearly crew chiefs are coming down here and noticing now, probably not a good idea for the rest of the day. Yeah, and, and that's, good, that's good information. But that's going to be a little that's going to be a little bit misgiving, too, because it, that's 85 laps on a set of left sides. Left that's side. more yeah. than two stops. Yeah. That's more than and two stops and that was not a blister that was, was worn out <clears throat> Greg Biffle gonna restart seventh here Chris well we showed you the blisters on the 48 now we've got blisters on the 16 the right rear of the 16 Greg Biffle was saying the car was very loose on that run when they pulled the tires off that car blisters all the way around the right rear those were scuffed tires prior to going on that car talk to Matt Pusha about that he said he is concerned they did do a wedge adjustment he's hoping that that helps with that situation. Also checked on the 48. The tires that came off the 48 looked good this time. The Coca-Cola in-car camera on TNT Race Buddy lets you ride shotgun with a Coca-Cola racing family driver like Tony Stewart. Go to NASCAR.com and check out the Coca-Cola in-car camera on TNT Race Buddy. Kurt Busch received the free pass under this, our fifth caution of the day. And you may remember Denny Hamlin and Martin Truex Jr. had come to pit road under green prior to the caution. They get the wave around here. They elect to take the wave around, I should say. Race leader, Dale Earnhardt Jr. As we get set to go back under green. You see Stewart up, Stewart up there, and Marty could probably touch on this. It, it looked to me like Tony's car didn't come in until later on in a run. He looked like he struggled at the first part of the run. I don't know what adjustments they've been making. Um, they actually, they obviously had a great pit stop. And a great restart. And a good restart. But it would be interesting to see if, if, uh, if he runs a little bit better on the get-go. And, and I think the, that restart also shows these guys are getting more comfortable with these tires because that's really the first time the inside line has been the, the way to go. The inside line has always lagged back just a little bit on the first two or three restarts that we have. And that's one of the advantages to being up front throughout the race. You can experiment and learn these things for later in the race. Clint Boyer, as good as he's been all day long, third right now in the running order. Jeff Gordon, we told you, after a nice pit stop, was up in the top five, he's fourth. Greg Biffle is fifth. Marcus Ambrose right behind him. 
Give a call to Ryan Newman. Changed an engine, started at the rear of the field today. The two-time Michigan winner has put himself in seventh spot. Jimmy Johnson did the same. You see him right here in front of Matt Kenseth. He is 16th in the running order. Yeah, Jimmy's kind of been hanging around that spot. Uh, it really hasn't made a whole lot of gains. Stuck in traffic back there. It's time now for KFC Fresh Off the Wire. Big topic of conversation this weekend, tires. Marty, what can you tell us? Tires and Tony Stewart taking the lead. These are the right side tires that came off of Tony Stewart's car. And you can see the right rear just completely chunked out. That's all the way around. That was 30 laps on these right side tires. And KP, to answer your next question, because I know one's coming, they went on as stickers. So they went on as stickers, lasted 30 laps, and you see what happened to them. Yeah. That's not what you want to see. No, that's not what you want to see. And that's one of the things these guys got into. And, I, and I'm not sure Marty and those guys in the pits will have to check this. But a lot of these guys, and we talked about it in practice on Friday, had scuffed all their tires to prepare for this race. When they brought new tires in and the left sides, I'm not sure how many more laps they put on their right side tires or whether they scuffed them again. But everybody talked about putting two or three cycles on a set of tires made the original tire here back. Hang on and Mark goes. And tires, what are fresh off the wire this weekend at Michigan. For more fresh off the wire presented by KFC, visit NASCAR.com. Larry? Yeah, all they're do when they scuff these tires is that you just have to run them one or two laps and just bring them up the temperature and then come in and let them cool completely down. And it actually hardens them up a little bit, which makes them just a little tougher, possibly where they won't blister. I want to give a call out there that Austin Dillon did a nice job today. He is. 33 car right there. Austin Dillon won the Truck Series Championship last year figuring nicely into the nationwide championship Ooh. battle and right behind him. <laughs> oh, look at, look at how it moved uh, Johnson up. You saw Kenza slide up the racetrack and Jimmy Johnson had to give him room. And boy, when she got the gray stuff, you're done. And, and you see, he has to get all the way out of it. Now, now he's, he's cleaning, cleaning his stuff, tires. Yeah. Exactly. Now, by the time he gets to the corner, two or three cars have gone by him and he's got to go in on the high side again, which is not where you want to go when you've got dirty tires. Casey Kane got by, so did Eric Almirola, and here comes Martin Truex Jr. Took the wave around after pitting under green prior to our last caution, and here's the driver of the 56 knocking on the door of the top 15. Uh, I'll save that move when you saw Kenseth go down in the corner and slide up and almost slide into the 48 car of Jimmy Johnson. These guys are driving right now and giving each other plenty of room and respecting each other's space right now. You don't see that really hard side by side. You see these guys giving each other room. Tony Stewart, the man out front, he has a win at Michigan. Closing on halfway on this Father's Day edition of the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. Glad you're with us on TNT.
Four laps away from halfway at Michigan International Speedway in this afternoon's Quicken Loans 400 on TNT. Tony Stewart, the race leader, he's led 11 laps today. He's seven tenths of a second in front of Dale Earnhardt Jr. Clint Boyer, Jeff Gordon, and Greg Biffle are the top five with 97 of 200 laps complete. Carl Edwards back in the 24th position. Let's listen to what they're saying. Here's Inside Tracks. Go back to uh, stickers. Go back to stickers. Tires look good there, but tires look good on us. There are some cars having trouble, 48 and 16. The 48 were uh, front tires, the 16 was a right rear. Now, I'm wondering, and Marty, once he gets. I'm curious, Marty, and some of these guys that are blistering tires. If, the, if they're telling the drivers they're blistering tires or, or not. <laughs> well, Wally, when I uh, listened to the 14 radio so far, Steve Addington has not told Tony Stewart that uh, he had a blister on his right rear. I was going to go talk to Addington in a moment, but would you tell, would you want your driver, would you want, would you want to know if you were going for the lead, if your right rear might have been blistered in the last stop? I'm no. sure you would, or you would not. No, that's what I was going to say. I, I mean, you know, obviously when a tire gets blistered, if it's like a rear tire, you get loose. And, and loose is okay when you're driving hard and all that, but I don't really want to know on blistering tires unless it gets to the point where it happens early in a run and they tell you you have to change your driving style. Yeah, exactly. And until that crew chief says, look, we've seen little blisters or we've seen these things and they're not going away, you're going to have to back it off a little bit. Right. But for what, where they're at right now, these things are chunking. And, you, and Marty talked about them, just chunking out. They're not really seeming to come apart yet. So when you look at it like that, yeah, it's a concern, but that driver knows in the back of his head, okay, we've had it, we've had blistering problems. This thing, boom, from one lap to the next, I'm getting loose. I've got to have a tire somewhere that's, so you back it down a little bit as a driver. Just past halfway, Tony Stewart, Dale Earnhardt Jr. running one, two, and Kyle Busch finds himself in the garage once again, scored in the 35th position, Ralph. Yes, and you're looking at Kyle Busch's car in the garage area. They're working once again on the internals of that engine. I spoke with Jimmy Maycar. You might see him in the background, the man in the baseball cap and the blue short sleeve shirt. He's one of the head men in the racing operations for Gibbs. And I said, what's the problem? He said, this time, we think we broke a rocker arm. A very different situation than what they had a week ago at Pocono. I asked him if this has been the same problem. He said, nope, something different every time. That's a frustrated bunch. And we should point out, these are the only three engine problems that Joe Gibbs Racing have had all year, and they've happened in successive weeks to the same driver. Yeah, and that, as you see a tweet there from, from Kyle's wife, uh, I'm at a loss for words three weeks in a row. But I, I think when you look at this, that's incredibly frustrating for a team. If you're knocking the bearings out of something week in and week out, you know you've got an oiling problem. If you're breaking valve springs, you know you've got a bad batch of valve springs or something's come along, whatever that may be. But when you're chasing a problem through the engine, there's more working components in there that you can't see and can't tell what happens to it. And all you're doing is trying to figure out, take the broken parts and say, how did this happen? And so you're always chasing a ghost. And here's the tough thing about it. They won at Richmond, top five Talladega, Darlington, Coke 600. Now three straight weeks, they're in the garage prematurely. Marty? Adam, I did just saw, talk to Steve Addington, finally got his attention, and they did tell Tony Stewart Wally about the right rear. Steve said he just wanted him to know, wanted to make sure he knew what was going on with the tires, but obviously Tony, not faced by it at all, he went for it on that restart to get the lead. Yeah, guys, just back to Kyle Busch and that 18 team, talking about three consecutive engine issues. You think about Dover, they had a reason. Too many RPM buzzing the tires, they broke valve springs. Last week, Dave Rogers told me it was pretty much self-inflicted from an oil system issue, and now a broke rocker arm probably definitely has them scratching their head. I'll tell you who's going to be scratching his head in a moment, Tony Stewart, because he's got company. Here comes Dale Earnhardt Jr. Yes, the dark night is rising through the standings at Michigan.
108 of 200 laps complete at Michigan International Speedway in the Quicken Loans 400. And there is a new sheriff in town, and his name, Dale Earnhardt Jr. While we were away at break, Tony Stewart, the race leader, you ride on board with Junior. Stewart said, go on by, you are faster, my man. And Junior's back on point. Tony Stewart running second. You got Clint Boyer in third. Now we go McDonald's through the field. Matt Yoakum leads us off. Four years ago this weekend, the last time Dale Jr. went to victory lane, right here at MIS. His program just continues to improve. Five top five finishes this season, more than the entire 2011 schedule. Junior says that the cloud cover is out. The race car much more neutral on this run. A tick free on entry. Marty. Tony Stewart in second, took the lead for a while, as we saw, just lost it to Dylan Hart Jr. a moment ago. He said he's gotten tight on entry in both one and three. That's what his problem is. Remember earlier, he said, we're taking no prisoners today, going for his first Michigan win since the year 2000. Ralph? Now, here's one you didn't think you'd hear today. Clint Boyer just said, you know, you may find this hard to believe. The car's feeling really good. That was a lap ago. So Clint Boyer pretty happy with the car right now. Jeff Gordon's up next. Jeff Gordon's made a good run from back in 20th, but they've been just doing two, two right side tires the last two stops. He said on this next stop, he needs four tires, and he needs the tire car to be tightened up. I looked at the team's scuff tires over there. They've got six sets of scuff tires at the 24. The 16, they were way loose before that last caution. Just checked in with Matt Puget. He said now they've gone the opposite direction. The car way too tight. This team, only two sets of scuff tires left. Matt? Impressive run by Ryan Newman, started at the back. Now he currently runs in the sixth position. Ryan has one win this year. We documented at the beginning of the show. He's one of those drivers trying to score another win to give him some insurance to lock in a wild card chase spot. The sun's back out. Ryan says the nose a little more positive than the previous run. Marty. Matt, Joey Lagana told me Tuesday his confidence is better than it's ever been in the Sprint Cup Series in the seventh position right now. They were loose on the very first run of the day. You see him trying to get around Ryan Newman. They have made several changes. They've been tight ever since. Can't get that tightness out of the car. Very close to green flag stops, Ralph. Mark Martin lost his father, Julian, back in August of 1998. He's running his father's name on the door today. His car right now, still a little free, Matt, but he's working it pretty good. He's running inside the top 10. Juan Pablo Montoya has brought that 42 machine all the way up tonight. He has been fighting loose from the drop of the green flag, the racetrack, just two, three, looking to make some big adjustments as we close in on the next round of pit stops, Ralph. Matt Kenseth, Matt, is another one that's a little bit loose right now. He's in Inside the top 10 as we get a little bit closer to another round of pit stops coming this way. They're going to try to get the fuel in that car. Everybody working on saving fuel here, Larry. Raft, the fastest man in NASCAR in 25 years. Our pole sitter, Marcus Ambrose, sat on the pole. He's led 13 laps. But as Marty Snyder reported, because they had not changed left side tires on this nine car since the start of the race, Four tires on that last caution, lost the track position, and he just can't seem to get anywhere. He's sitting back there in 11th spot right now. So Marcus Ambrose in the 11th position. And while we were going through the field, brought to you by McDonald's, we did have a green flag pit stop. Brad Keselowski coming down under green. Let's hear what he had to say on the radio. Yeah, I got a nurse. This thing is getting really loose. Just a small vibration. I gotta come. I gotta come here, man. This ain't right. Bring it to us here. He was running 14th when he came down, Marty. Yeah, and that vibration was a blistered right rear for Brad Keselowski. They came in a lot earlier than everybody else and walking up to the tire now. Not as bad as Tony Stewart's was, but again, chunked all the way around for Brad Keselowski on that right rear tire. And, and when a tire blisters, and when it does happen, it, it it almost gives you a feel like that tire is rock hard. Yes. It, it, it just, it goes to loose, no traction whatsoever. So you know when you blister a tire. Everybody pitted under caution at lap 82. Here they come down under green at lap 115. Logano and Newman get it started, Matt. And Newman, great qualifying effort. We documented starting at the back. What an impressive run. Solid stop by the Army guys. Newman said the car, if anything, near the end. Cloud cover coming in and out. A wedge adjustment, the car just a tick on the free side. Marty. Joey Logano still tight, like we talked about. They go up one round on the track bar. He, too, said, I have a vibration. 
They said bring it in right now. Don't worry about it. It's going to be four tires for Joey Logano. Coming down pit road right now is Tony Stewart. Also Jamie McMurray coming down pit road. Stewart about to hit his stall. He was tight entry in the first part of that run. At the very end of the run, he said, I started to get loose off. So they'll make an air pressure adjustment for Tony Stewart. It will be four tires for him as well, Ralph. Marty, it was four tires of fuel for the 15. As I told you before, he loved the car. So he stayed right with the setup the way it was. Kevin Harvick is in as well. They're going to make a quick chassis adjustment on the number 29. And they get all the fuel in there they can. Everybody's watching that fuel mileage, Matt. Ralph, further up pit road, Denny Hamlin, who's won the past two June races here at MIS, in his box. He said the car was tight from the center off. Air pressure change for Hamlin. Ralph. 17, and Matt Kenseth is in all the way down, right at the entrance to pit road. Quick chassis adjustment to the right rear of that car. And as far as Casey Kane goes, it is fuel and four tires on the number five. A quick cleaning of the grill, and Casey is off on another way, Chris. Well, Jimmy Johnson saying that sometimes the car a little bit tight, other times the car a little bit loose. Going to do fuel and tire, slight air pressure adjustment. Matt? And Dale Earnhardt Jr. makes his way to his pit box. Remember the last time on pit road, Steve Letarte went with a two-tire change. Track bar adjustment to tweak the balance. This time they're going to go four. Just keeping the cycle of four to two to try to keep this car, Chris, on two tires as much as possible. Well, now they're going to try and loosen up the 16. Got a wedge adjustment at the left rear four tires fuel. Marty. Marco Sambros all the way at the end of pit road. He said his car got a little too tight this time when he was in traffic. It's going to be four tires for Ambrose, who, as Larry Knight pointed out, never made his way back into the top ten. Matt. Waiting on fuel for Mark, Martin Truex Jr. They topped him off. His car just not consistent, Chris. Well, the last two stops, it's just been two right side tires for the 24. This time they're going to do four tires on that car. Also, track bar down two rounds. Jeff Gordon getting his service at lap 119. And we have just about gone through the complete cycle of green flag stops as we have crossed past the middle stages of the Quicken Loans 400. One driver that has yet to come to pit road under green, the man you see right here, Juan Pablo Montoya, has inherited the race lead, and we have a caution. Sixth of the day, and once again, it's Kurt Busch down the back straightaway. I think Kurt would like to go home right now. Yeah, and, and you know, he's already got damage, so he's got his hands full anyhow. We've seen him uh, in a couple of different shots uh, with faster cars and him pulling down, getting out of the way. Uh, but that thing was was pretty much juking and jiving on him a few times. It, it was, yeah, he was having a hard time when it was good. When it was good. <laughs> yes. The field a little discombobulated with a cycle of green flag pit stops. We'll get everything reset when we return. As of now, it's Montoya on point at Michigan.
NASCAR Spring Cup Racing from Michigan International Speedway is brought to you by KFC. Come in today and taste why fresh is better. By Sprint. Avoid a data dilemma with truly unlimited data. Go to Sprint.com forward slash speed. By GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. By American Ethanol Sweepstakes. Enter for your chance to win one of three Chevy Silverados. And by Chrysler. Imported from Detroit. And the top two drivers that did not pit under green have now done so under caution. Juan Pablo Montoya, Carl Edwards. Mark Martin got the free pass. We'll set the field after a break. Welcome back to Michigan. Let's take an inside look and get unlimited access to the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series brought to you by the NASCAR Sprint Cup mobile app and truly unlimited data on the Sprint Network. Most laps led today, Greg Biffle, 35 circuits. He's been out front this afternoon. You can get live in-car audio and real-time stats on the NASCAR Sprint Cup mobile Android app only from Sprint. Learn more at Sprint.com slash speed. And speaking of speed, the top speed today, Tony Stewart, 215 miles per hour. So a number of drivers had made pit stops under green. The two that hadn't, Juan Pablo Montoya and Carl Edwards, they came in under this caution. The driver that got the free pass was Mark Martin. 21 drivers took the wave around. And now that we have reset the field, the race leader will be Jeff Gordon and Dale Earnhardt Jr., who was leading when that cycle of green flag pit stops began, will restart second. And right behind him on track was Tony Stewart, who restarts third. And Boyer, who was running in the third position when that cycle of stops began, restarts in the sixth position. Well, we got a chance to look at Jeff Gordon out front. Picks the inside lane. Haven't seen him there in a while. Team that needs a good break. Opportunity to get it done here. Outside lane, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Didn't work great for him a while ago when he was the race leader. We'll see what he does here as he restarts the runner up. When the green glows, goes in the air, we complete lap 125.
Montoya give him a little shove there to Junior who goes around Gordon on the outside. Boyer getting aggressive in the outside Whoa. lane. Oh, Whoa. there's Joey Logano around. Hard into the wall in the back straightaway. Casey Kane, David Gillen among those that got damage. Wow. Hard to tell where that started at. You just saw the 20 car come back across the racetrack the yeah. wrong way. Yeah, you don't know if he got tagged or not, but wow. Look at the damage on that. Logano trying to drive it, and he's going right into the wall with that damage he's got. Casey Kane able to drive away, but for the second consecutive week, he's going to experience disappointment. Top middle of your screen, Joey Logano in the orange car. Comes up off the corner. Uh, he just turned down to avoid yeah. the 38 car, and when he did, it just got loose on him. It got loose, and then he overcorrected right around 38. I mean, yeah, that was like he was going to the 38 car. Like he was going to slap the 38 with his right rear, and then drove right around the front of the 38. McGillan got way up in the racetrack, and he just uh, Logano just went down to avoid yeah. him. And yeah, it, cold tires, you know, new tires. It's like Joey spins himself trying to keep from hitting somebody. Yeah. Two of the last three drivers to win in Sprint Cup competition involved in this accident. Logano last week at Pocono a few weeks ago. Casey Kane in the Coke 600. And, and that 38 obviously pushed up the racetrack, just like Wally said. As he was on the high side, he really let off because those cars were really streaming by him on the inside there. See the 38 get a little loose, slip up the racetrack. He's sideways right there. Joy tries to, to avoid him, thinking he might come back. At the worst part to do that, because you got so, so much, much steering wheel already turned into it. Joey Logano tried to drive his car away to no avail. He did climb from his machine, go to the ambulance. He'll make the ride to the infield care center. Talked as we opened up our show today about how wild things have gotten in the wild card standings. Let's stir it up a little bit more. Jeff Gordon running inside the top five. A win would get him involved in the wild card conversation. And two drivers that already have victories inside the top 20, Casey Kane and Joey Logano, having problems here today, Larry. Hey, Adam, you might have a hard time convincing Joey Logano, Casey Kane, or David Gilliland because it obviously didn't work out for them. But think about those other 18 drivers that took a wave around. That's exactly what they needed right there. In fact, a lot of them, I think, will come to pit road like Brad Keselowski. Remember, he hadn't been on pit road since lap 109 with a blistered tire. Yeah, he's the big beneficiary, Larry, because he pitted under green earlier than most drivers. There's a lot of drivers that were in that cycle of green flag stops that weren't too far off everyone else. BK getting a huge break here. Tough times for Joey Logano, David Gillen, and Casey Kane. It's off to the garage for them.
Welcome back to Michigan International Speedway, where four of the last eight races have been won on fuel mileage at this two-mile oval. So let the strategy begin. Lap 128, number of drivers coming down, topping off the fuel tank. Among them, Brad Keselowski, Ryan Newman, Jamie McMurray, Eric Almirola, Bobby Labonte, David Reagan, all coming down for service there at lap 128. And of the drivers that stayed on track, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Jeff Gordon, Juan Pablo Montoya, Clint Boyer, and Tony Stewart. And when you see those guys that stayed out, look what they're doing. Yeah, playing the fuel mileage game. Shut off the engine and save some fuel. I, I'd be saving some tires. <laughs> yeah. however, however you do that. How you gonna do that, man? <laughs> That's good. 129 of 200 complete today in the Quicken Loans 400 at Michigan. Welcome back to Michigan International Speedway, where four of the last eight races have been won on fuel mileage at this two-mile oval. So let the strategy begin. Lap 128, number of drivers coming down, topping off the fuel tank. Among them, Brad Keselowski, Ryan Newman, Jamie McMurray, Eric Almirola, Bobby Labonte, David Reagan, all coming down for service there at lap 128. And of the drivers that stayed on track, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Jeff Gordon, Juan Pablo Montoya, Clint Boyer, and Tony Stewart. And when you see those guys that stay out, look what they're doing. Yeah, playing the fuel mileage game. Shut off the engine and save some fuel. I, I'd be saving some tires. <laughs> yeah. however, however you do that. How are you going to do that, man? <laughs> That's good. 129 of 200 complete today in the Quicken Loans 400 at Michigan.
131 of 200 laps complete this afternoon in the Quicken Loans 400 for the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. Under caution for the seventh time today, Joey Logano, David Gilliland, Casey Kane, all involved in an accident on the back straightaway. Logano went to the infield care center. He has been checked out and released. Good news there. And now we update our AT&T Fastest Driver Challenge. Greg Biffle running seventh right now as the fastest time so far of those drivers that qualified in the top four. Sign up next week by texting FAST to 34763 or visit attfastestdriver.com. AT&T Rethink Possible. Chris? Well, Jeff Gordon having a good run, sitting second right now. Just checked in with crew chief Alan Gustafson. He said they can do it in one more stop and no issue with tires on that car. They've looked good coming off the 24 all day. The 16th, back, the 16 back in seventh. They can also do it in one more stop, but they are concerned about tires. Matt? Ryan Newman back in 15th. They topped off on lap 128 at this juncture. They are good to go on one more stop. The question on the previous run, he had a blistered right rear. When we had that segment, Marty, where we had sun and shade. We wanted to show you the blistered right rear from Brad Keselowski, Matt, and we said it wasn't too bad, but we didn't see what was on the bottom. A huge blister that came off a couple of stops ago. The common thread we found, these are all sticker tires that have been blistered, so this may be a race of tires to the end. Adam? We'll complete lap 132, Marty, when the green flag goes back in the air. Dale Earnhardt Jr., Jeff Gordon, the teammates at Hendrick Motorsports sharing the front row, and Tony Stewart getting out of line early as we go down into turn one. They're going to be three wide. Stewart able to drive around Montoya, and it's Dale Jr. who grabs the point off of turn two. Greg Biffle in that mix. These cars are really, really slip, slipping and sliding. Oh, here we go. See my toy up and there goes oh. Denny Hamlin down on the apron into the grass. Big damage for the 11. Caution is out for the eighth time today. Oh. And I was just getting ready to say these cars are really slipping and sliding on, on new tires. They go down in the corner and go straight up the racetrack. It just, just looks like a slide job. Yes. On top of it. It's incredible. He was running in the 14th position when he got sideways off the corner. Hamlin has won the last two races here in June, and that thing's on fire. Yeah, he's going to probably want to get out of that pretty quick. I'd say real quick. There's a great onboard shot. Find the, find the fireman. So you got Kyle Busch, who <laughs> went to the garage area with engine troubles. He's back out and running, but more than 40 laps down. Joey Logano in the garage, and now you got Denny Hamlin climbing out. With big Trying. problems to yeah, his race car. so much stuff hooked to your helmet and everything yeah. these days. It takes a little time. And they sprayed so much of that fire extinguisher in there, he probably couldn't breathe while because it's just being sucked up into the car with him. He wasn't as concerned about the fire as he was the, the extinguisher. Hamlin walked away fine. Crew members there to help him out. Looked like, yeah, it's good to see. Some of the other crew guys from Kyle Busch's group over to help Denny get out. Here's the replay on the inside of Truex, Harvick to the outside, Newman to the inside. They just Four made wide. room down there, yeah. Just look, did he get tagged by the 39? I, I don't think he got tagged. Look, uh, look at the 39, I don't know. Look at the 56, watch in front of this accident. Uh, the 56 all of a sudden goes up the racetrack. Um, I don't know that he, it's almost like he was like the 22. You see right here, he's down on the inside. Or I think the 39 the, the may 39 just right there. a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, and the 39 he in, was loose and the, he corrected and, and I think he, and he got into the 56. You see the 56 yeah. wo wobble yeah. and get into the car in front of him. You see that one puff of smoke. That might've been the 48 of Jimmy Johnson. Probably lucky we didn't have more guys involved yeah. in that accident. That, that was Definitely. like, they're four wide and all four cars touch. This is what it almost looks like. You see it. This, this will be a good shot right here. See, the left right there and right. Bottom of four. Yeah, right there, four. you got him. Two now. One bumper tight, clear high, clear high. Come on. He's Still okay. Green. Come on. Still green. Come on. But a Caution scary down. ride Caution. for Denny Hamlin, Matt. And he is catching his breath. A lot of fire retardant stuff going off. Are you okay first? Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, there's a lot of good safety stuff. And a lot of, I think all the crew guys that hauled ass over there in, uh, and got me out uh, so 
It was just a, you know, a tough day. You know, we just didn't have the track position, got caught uh, twice with that, with those cautions when we pitted, and just a tough day for our FedEx office car. But uh, I thought we had a car that could run, you know, top three or four times at times, but uh, just didn't have a great day. And this is on fire is not a good way to end it. All right, when you're inside that car and the fire's going on, the extinguisher's going off, and you're trying to compartmentalize and get that car to a stop, what's it like inside that car? Well, I'd never, I'd actually never been in that position before. Uh, I'd seen it um, with other guys, but I never have known what it's actually like. Uh, but it gets hot. <laughs> I, I thought from the for a second there I was okay. Uh, you know, it's just in the back, and then something uh, exploded in the front and, and caught on fire. But you know, thankfully we got everything that we have uh, safety-wise, and you know, messed up the 16's pit box. Uh, but um, you know, just one of those days. Uh, be glad to get out of Michigan. Another example of NASCAR safety innovations throughout the years. So what it looked like inside the cockpit. Here's the onboard camera with Denny Hamlin. Make sure you got brakes here. Stop right here and get some fire. Get out of it. That's out the back. Get out, get out. It feels like eternity yes. Yes. when you're trying to get out of a car yeah. that's on fire. And you're trying to find your radio cords and everything else yeah. to, to just get out. Well, we told you it's been a tough day for Joe Gibbs Racing. Joey Logano has come from the care center, Ralph. Yeah, he is, and he's been patiently waiting for us here. Joey, so much great success last couple of weeks today, the other side of the racing game. Tell us what happened. Uh, not really sure. I haven't seen a replay of it, but... Um uh, we were just restarting there. I was on the outside uh, behind the 17. It looked like we were going to be all right. And um, it was a slower uh, car out on the outside. And I was trying to turn down underneath him. And uh, I think I just got loose or I got tapped from behind. I'm not really sure. And then uh, overcorrected and, and, and got in the fence there. So, um, you know, a little frustrating for us. We had a top 10, maybe a top five car there. Um, you know, we we're really making improvements with our Home Depot car. So, um, you know, we're not going to let this get us down. You know, we've been on a roll lately. And we're going to keep that going next week in Sonoma. That's not going to dent the confidence he's had lately. That's for sure. And they're speaking out on Twitter about the rough day for Joe Gibbs Racing. Just one dog left in the fight. Now that dog is spinning, referring to Denny Hamlin. You can be involved in the conversation. It's twitter.com slash hashtag NASCAR. Back to Michigan after a break.
Week three on TNT, going to be a fun one. Next Sunday, we head west to wine country for some road racing in Sonoma. Our coverage begins 2 p.m. Eastern time with Countdown to Green, followed by the Toyota Save Mark 350. It is without a doubt one of the best dates on the NASCAR calendar. It ha I mean, it, it's been a good race for the last couple of years. Denny Hamlin's car caught on fire, came down pit road. They extinguished that and a number of teams having to work on their pit areas to make sure all the debris and liquid is gone. Larry? Adam, let's go into Larry Max two box and let's take a look at Carl Edwards, the 99 cars day. Remember, he started back in the 40th position. Get our old touch screen to work here. And he came in here outside the top 10 in points. But as you can see, he started making gains throughout the day. Now, they have made four pit stops. But the key pit stop was right in here about lap 52 when they went with two tires. But the real key was right here on about lap 120 when just remember, all drivers except Montoya and Carl Edwards had made their green flag pit stops. And now Carl Edwards has cracked the top 10. But the big deal, guys, right there, 10th in the points. That's going to be huge for Carl Edwards if he can stay up there. That is a nice circle, Larry. That was very nice. I think he does it as maps of the state. <laughs> yeah, that was very nice. That graph looks Michigan. It was Michigan. That graph looks about like my stomach. I'm, I bet about it's just gradually After the gotten veg, hungry and uh, hungrier and hungrier. <laughs> Well, you, you got to give a nod to the guys over in the 99 bunch, and a special thanks to Bob Osborne, Carl, and that entire crew for letting us ride along today via inside tracks. It's always great to be able to go on board with them. Here's Paul Menard getting set for the restart. Dale Earnhardt Jr. leading. He's led more laps than anybody today. 41 of the 138 complete. Next on that list, Greg Biffle at 35. And there you see Jeff Gordon in second right in front of this guy, Clint Boyer. Now we look at Tony Stewart. All these guys inside the top five. There's Greg Biffle in the fifth position. And there's the guy that's pulling them all around, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Another great day this afternoon. Tony Stewart started eighth today, spent some time out front. In fact, Smoke has led 18 laps this afternoon and probably feeling pretty good right now, Marty. Yeah, Adam, remember we talked about at the beginning of the day, he was worried about these new tires, kind of threw this team for a loop, but we finally figured out why Tony is so good today. Take a listen. Aren't you glad you took that second nap today? You up it? Said, aren't you glad you got that second nap in today? Yeah. Amazing what that extra hour and a half did for me. Oh, yeah. And that's what got Tony so good. Uh, Adam, I thought the key for our broadcast today was when Wally slept from lap zero to about 100. I thought that was a big key for Wally today. Don't you agree, Adam? And not to mention the two hours when it was raining before <laughs> exactly. we went on the air. What did that you do while that rain delay was that going was on, Wally? That was a good nap. There was a lot of peace <laughs> up here in the, in the booth, wasn't there, Wally? Great booth time. <laughs> he slept from the start of the race, lap 100. He's been eating French fries since lap 125. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Nothing yeah. wrong with that. He's not the only pee in that pod. We're getting down to it here at Michigan. Been an interesting day. Rain delay of a couple hours earlier this afternoon. All the weather is gone. Sunshine, gorgeous Father's Day here in the Irish Hills of Michigan. And if you are just joining us, so glad you were here. And you may see the big one for Dale Earnhardt Jr. Hasn't won in four years, but he's out front right now. Going to choose the outside lane on the restart. Jeff Gordon inside of him. Clint Boyer, Tony Stewart, Greg Biffle, Juan Pablo Montoya, the front three rows. Larry talked about Carl Edwards Day. He restarts alongside his teammate and the championship leader coming in, Matt Kenseth. 60 laps to go when we go green. And that's right now. Dale Jr. grabs the point on the restart. And Tony Stewart strong again. Look at Jimmy Johnson moving out of line, trying wow. to get inside of Ambrose. Yeah, that was nice. 
and he does it successfully. Oh, oh. Yeah, oh, Carl and Matt about got yes. together in front of him. And I think it may have killed their momentum because Johnson's looking for more. Yeah, it definitely killed the 99 of Carl Edwards. Definitely killed his momentum. How about Jimmy Johnson started this day at the tail of the field with an engine change. They've worked hard all day to get to the front. Right now, he scored in the eighth position. Johnson never won here at Michigan, one of five tracks where he's yet to go to victory lane. Got to give a call to Montoya, who's sixth. And he has been in the top ten most of the day. I mean, he's, they've just kind of hung in there. And we've we've documented over the last, you know, couple of weeks, but even on doing other stuff, how the Ganassi teams just have not performed this year like they have in the past. His teammate Jamie McMurray back in the 13th position right now. Six of the top ten in this race, represented by Hendrick Motorsports and Roush Fenway. Dale Jr. leading the way. Teammate Jeff Gordon is third. Jimmy Johnson is eighth. Roush Fenway organization has Greg Biffle running fifth, Matt Kenseth seventh, and Carl Edwards in the ninth position. As you look at the aforementioned Jamie McMurray, who's looking for a top ten finish. Say Harvick had all those problems with his race car earlier, and he's knocking on the door of the top ten right now. Yeah, you know, earlier we thought he was making some major adjustments. He was not making adjustments at that point in time. They were had had that dust cap cover uh, that, that was an issue, and that got him way out of track position, and it's taken him a little while of passing cars and working through the cycles to get back up uh, to be a top 10 or 15 car. Saw Matt Kenseth go around Juan Pablo Montoya. Jimmy Johnson looking for his chance as they come off turn four. After Denny Hamlin talked to our Matt Yoakum a moment ago on pit road, he did have to go to the infield care center. He's gotten checked out and been released. Closing on the three-quarter mark in today's event here in Michigan. Dale Earnhardt Jr., who's led more laps than anyone, has a two-tenths of a second advantage over Tony Stewart. Jeff Gordon, 1.3 seconds behind his teammate. Gordon in third. Boyer and Biffle complete the top five. And behind them, there's the battle. Kenseth, Montoya, and Johnson, sixth, seventh, and eighth right now. You know, Marcus Ambrose, he's a road course guy. There's no doubt. When we go to Sonoma next week, he'll be one of the drivers everybody's got their eye on. He's one at Watkins Glen, so we know how strong he is. But started on the pole today, and he's been in the top ten most of the afternoon until right now. That's Mark Martin going around for the final spot in the top ten. You know, Ambrose has run good on a lot of ovals. I mean, he's he yes. really good at Bristol. He's run great at Martinsville. You know, they, they keep putting runs like this together, he, he's going to get an oval one. Yes, he is. And, and, you know, his car seemed to be better on a longer run. We saw it early on. Uh, he wasn't good the first five or six laps. Biffle just makes a power move on the 15 car of Clint Boyer. But I'm impressed with Clint. When you go down the list and you look at it with Michael Waltrip Racing, it's a Toyota in the top five, and it's Michael Waltrip Racing, uh, which is pretty big. Clint, some of these places Clint just latched onto, and Michigan was one of those places uh, really, when you start looking at it from, from when he came here, he liked this place. Working with a new crew chief with a new team in 2012. Top 10 in points have been very consistent, although Boyer did just lose fourth to Greg Biffle. And that last time around, Biffle found himself 2.9 seconds behind the race leader. And that is Dale Earnhardt Jr. Just over 50 laps to go at Michigan.
And let's take an inside look and get unlimited access to the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series brought to you by the NASCAR Sprint Cup mobile app and truly unlimited data on the Sprint Cup network. Fastest four-tire pit stop today. Tony Stewart's bunch, 12.4 seconds. Get live in-car audio and real-time stats on the NASCAR Sprint Cup mobile Android app only from Sprint. Learn more at sprint.com slash speed. 17 lead changes today among 10 different leaders. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is the man in charge right now. He's led more laps than any other. 55 circuits he has been out front this afternoon. Yeah, but he's checking his mirror quite a bit right now because he's looking at that 14 up in the mirror. He's not pulling away from it as he was earlier. Last time around, he was three tenths of a second in front of Tony Stewart. As we close on the end of this one, let's go through the field presented by McDonald's. Adam, not a lot of breathing room, as you mentioned, from Dale Earnhardt Jr. back to second to Tony Stewart. Jr. says the car barely too snug in the middle of the corners at both ends of the racetrack. Over the past 142 races, it's his last race for his second six different times. Maybe today is the day he revisits victory lane. Marty? Matt, I would say Tony Stewart is stalking back there. He just said on the radio to his team, he ain't going anywhere, talking about Dale Earnhardt Jr. He's hanging right where he wants him to be. Probably about 10 laps or so from a stop. Stewart riding the momentum of four straight Michigan top tens, trying to make it five in a row and get a win, Chris. Well, Jeff Gordon trying to get that monkey off his back today. They look to be in pretty good shape. That team has not had any problems with tires all day long. They'll be coming in for a pit stop probably in the next 10 laps. The 16 car, they had issues early. They put a spring rubber in the left rear. That car working a lot better now. And that team really prepping the pit box down here for that final pit stop because this is exactly where that 11 car caught on fire. This is when it's all about the spotter and the driver. The spotter telling the driver, just keep hitting your marks. That's what the word is to Clint Boyer right now. After we get 10 to 15 laps in, you're going to start to pull away. He's encouraging his dryer, and he's telling him to just stay the course. Do what we're telling you and save fuel. We got a fast race car. As far as the 17, all is quiet for Matt Kenseth. He, too, is feeling pretty good about his race car. He also needs just one more stop for fuel. Chris and the 17 can go to the end. Jimmy Johnson had to start at the back today, but he's marched his way all the way up into the top 10, sitting seventh right now. But we have seen tires wish this car throughout the day. Right now, Chad Canals taught him, take it easy on you about the tires, especially on that last stop. Jimmy Johnson saying the tires just aren't digging into the track the way they should. Hardy? Chris, five years ago today, Carl Edwards won this race. Today started 42nd, currently running eighth. He said when he gets back to the gas, the car snaps loose now. They also have a little bit of paper on the right side of the grill. That's a little bit of a concern with oil and water temperature, Ralph. This is the 53rd Michigan start for Mark Martin in car 55. He's won here five times, and he's got a good enough race car to get the job done today, Matt. He also only needs one more stop for fuel. His balance is good. Juan Pablo Montoya just trying to hold on to a top 10 finish at this point. His car is on the free side. No change in the last stop. They plan on making their last scheduled stop on lap 164, Larry Mack. Yeah, Matt, we call him Mr. Where Did He Come From? Kevin Harvick in that 29 car sat on the outside of the front row. But remember, Ralph reported on that first competition cost at lap 25. They had to come back to pit road three times to replace that front hubcap. But now Kevin Harvick here with 43 laps to go, sitting in the 12th position. Yeah, Larry, he's a driver that has overcome adversity today. And the big mover early in this race was Ryan Newman. Right now, the Rocket Man back in the 15th position. Well, you look at where some of the top runners are in regard to their strategy. Dell Jr. last pitted lap 118, Stewart a couple of laps before that. Gordon at 119, Biffle and Boyer both at lap 122. And you heard our pit reporters talking about the various strategies and Larry, what are your observations as we close on the last 40 laps? Well, Tony Stewart would be the one that should have to hit pit road first, and he's sitting there running in second. He pitted last on lap 116. We noted the fuel window is somewhere between lap 32 and 38, 38 laps, but remember, guys, since all these leaders pitted, we have had 20 caution laps. I have to believe what these guys are going to try to do is go three or four more laps. That would make it where they can make it to the end after this next green flag stop. Boy, this is, especially with the 
front two guys, you've got to get everything you can yep. to that yes. first pit lane because they're so close right now. I mean, the, uh, positions could swap right here on these pit stops. And a lot of us got to not only with the pit stop, but getting to your pit box and then getting back up to speed. The if, if it's, of course, a green flag. The, the advantage for Junior last time around three tenths of a second. Certainly we'll monitor where they are in that regard prior to the pit stop so we can follow up after they make green flag pit stops unless we were to get a caution between now and then. I'll tell you two weeks in a row for the 48 team. Last week caught speeding on pit road twice when a lap down deep in the field rally through for a top five today that lost engine start at the back and come all the way through and well, he's seventh right now could get Boyer for sixth and don't rule him out before this day is over. Which you totally expect from this team all the time with the 48 guys. I mean, they, 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 they'll have problems, but these guys always seem to fight their way back into the top seven or top ten, no matter what goes wrong during the race. Talked earlier about Montoya. They had a little strategy play early with two tires, as many other drivers did, gained 12 positions to put them in the top ten. They've been there all day. He's 10th right now. You see, it, it just doesn't seem like the 48 can get out of a certain like He's lane. got his line. He runs. Yes. And if he gets out of that line, he slips. Yeah, he rolls in pretty good and picks up the gas pretty good. But he needs the rest of the racetrack to be able to go where he, to use it. You see him right there. Well, here he's coming, coming in. in. Pits. Yeah. Jimmy Johnson, last time he came down pit road, lap 117. Scheduled green flag service for the five-time champ, Chris. Yeah, he's going to have to make one more stop after this. Some of these teams were hoping to stretch it 40 laps. Obviously, Jimmy Johnson not going to be able to do that. It's going to be interesting if he's going to do two tires or four tires here right now. Left, right side tires looks like going to do a chassis adjustment at the right rear on that car. Looks to me like we're only going to do right side tires and pack that car full of fuel on this stop. Pit stop for Johnson, lap 162. And here come the top two. Dale Earnhardt Jr. gives up the race lead. Right behind him, Tony Stewart. Let's go to Matt Yoakum. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. trying to close the deal. Scores first win in four years in the black 88 car. Now you heard him say we we're doing our through the field. I told you the junior said the car just a touch tight at both ends of the racetrack. The right side tires going around. Ralph, they are good to go at this juncture, even on a green, white checker finish. Matt, Matt, it was just two tires for the 17 of Matt Kenseth and a fuel. Full load of fuel. He should be good, Marty. Tony Stewart a little bit loose off the corner. They waited on the fuel to make sure they got it full. He's a little bit loose. They went down half around on the track bar. He loses a little bit of ground, apparently, to Dylan Hunt Jr. sitting here on pit road. And the 88 bunch definitely had a little bit better stop. Carl Edwards has gotten his service, as has Kevin Harvick. Martin Truex Jr. was in for a green flag stop. Not sure if we touched on Jeff Gordon. Marcus Ambrose, the pole sitter, has been inside the top 12 most of the day. Here he comes at lap 164, Marty. Matt, the, 30, the 39 of Ryan Newman's in his car. It's the tightest it's been all day. They noticed some trash in the grill. They also told Ryan, do not slide your tires. Right sides, Marty. Marco Sambos had been begging to come to pit road. He said that set of tires really bad for his chassis. It's going to be two tires. He was extremely tight. Had a bad vibration the whole run. Just two tires full of fuel, Chris. Matt Fuchsia telling Greg Biffle, don't slide the tires coming into pit lane. There's a little bit of a worry because of all that oil and fuel that was down because of the 11 car, but they're just going to do two tires. Trying to tighten this car up a little bit. But real quick stop here. Matt. Toya just trying to end the day with a solid finish score, his second top 10 finish of 2012. Just trying to tweak the balance. Slight air pressure change. The second can of fuel, like so many others, just trying to keep the cycle of tires. Rights only for the 42, Ralph. He's on pit lane. Here he comes. Clint Boyer down pit road. This is going to be gas only for the 15 as they talk him into the box. Crew is ready to go. They hand him a drink bottle. No changes to the car. They clean the grill. One can is in. Here comes the second one. Got to pack it all in there. It puts the fuel out. He's away. Mark Martin running inside the top 10 has also made his pit stop for service in lap 166. Austin Dillon doing a great job this afternoon in the 33 car for Richard Childress Racing, making a green flag stop here as we close on the latter stages at Michigan. 
Jamie McMurray, the race leader, after everyone else had pitted, now he will give up the top spot and come to pit road. Dale Jr. has cycled back up to eight in the running order. Here comes McMurray, Marty. Yeah, they've had a pretty good day, Adam. McMurray told me before the race started that the new tire really helped out their chassis set up a bunch. They had a loose car for much of the first half of the race, but it's been better here in the second half of the race for McMurray, running around the 12th position for much of this run. It'll be right side tires for McMurray and McMurray and full of fuel. They tried to clean the grill. They have a little bit of debris there. Debris there. They didn't get all of the debris off that grill, Adam. Brad Keselowski, Jeff Burton, the only two drivers that have not pitted in this exchange under green. Dale Earnhardt Jr. back up now running in the third position as things continue to cycle through. And once Brad and Jeff Burton make their stops, it will be Jr., Stewart, Biffle, Kenseth, and Jimmy Johnson, the top five. And based on the numbers we're seeing right now, Johnson would have picked up two positions in this exchange of stops. Brad Leighton at his home track, but he's going to have to pit in a moment. Back to Michigan after a break. The Quicken Loans 400 on TNT is presented by Quicken Loans, engineered to amaze, and brought to you in part by Frost Brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer, by The Amazing Spider-Man in theaters July 3rd, by Five Hour Energy, hours and hours of energy, by Coca-Cola, it's time to refuel, Coca-Cola, open happiness, and by AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network, AT&T, rethink possible. When we went to break here in Michigan, Brad Keselowski, Jeff Burton running 1-2. They have made their scheduled green flag pit stops, and that puts Dale Earnhardt Jr. back in the race lead with 27 laps to go. When the cycle of stops began, he was eight-tenths of a second in front of Tony Stewart. He now has a second-and-a-half lead. And, and he's actually gained a little bit of that in the last three or four laps. When they came out, he was about a second ahead of Stewart. And like you said, now he's the second-and-a-half. He's the only driver this season, Wally, to complete every lap. 
He's got 11 top 10 finishes in 14 races. He hasn't won since we were here four years ago. That, that, that top stat, only driver all year with the, with that's the stat. That's, that's an impressive stat. That truly is. Because the two of you know how difficult it is to bring it every week. Yes. It, it, we talked about earlier uh, at Pocono that you keep putting those runs together, you're going to win a race eventually. Ooh. Matt Kenseth out of shape, opens the door for Jimmy Johnson. This is the battle for fourth. Jimmy come up at him and it just, <laughs> uh, that 17 got free. Johnson grabs the position. And Jimmy's a little faster right here. The 17, as we noticed earlier, had worked his way around Juan. Then the 48 had to work his way, and there was a huge separation. The 48 had run the 17 back down. And want to confirm for Jimmy Johnson fans, he made that pit stop at lap 162 under green. He is good to go the distance on fuel. I tell you, you can't say enough about that, the way that team battles through adversity. We touched on the top five. Earnhardt, Stewart, Biffle, Johnson, and Kenseth. Clint Boyer now in the eighth position, Ralph. Well, getting enough fuel in the car is one thing. Getting the driver comfortable is another. Clint Boyer wanted tires on that last stop. Ryan Patty didn't want to waste the time. Boyer's not happy about it. Listen to the radio conversation because at some time, it's a crew chief that just has to make the call. Why didn't we take two? Roulette with tires. Focus out front. We made an adjustment. I didn't want to get too tight. All right, too tight. I'm loose. <laughs> and that's loose when a driver sounds yes, like that. When he man. sounds like that. Yeah. Boyer is hanging on to eighth right now, but he's working for every bit of it. 23 laps to go, and Junior is the man on point at Michigan. Nineteen laps remain. NASCAR on TNT, live at Michigan International Speedway. And you're watching live coverage of the Quicken Loans 400. And as we count down the laps, 
We reflect back to what happened here four years ago, the last time that Dale Earnhardt Jr. went to Victory Lane in Sprint Cup Series competition. His only win for Hendrick Motorsports. Been a while for his crew chief, Steve Letart, since he's won a race. And I'm gonna tell you though, man, this thing is on a rail. He's gotta keep it on a rail for 18 more laps, but it has been, they built to this all year long. I don't care, this has been building since they left Daytona, it really has. They've had solid runs, solid weeks, week in and week out. And last week at Pocono, Larry said it on, on the countdown to green. That was the first time Larry really felt like that was a place that they were just going to dominate. They made that call at the end, and that's the way it was. Uh, but this is two weeks in a row that he has had one of the dominant cars. Here's what has impressed me, though, throughout 2012 for Dale Jr., and we had another case of it this weekend. When things haven't been good, they have fought through the hard times and made them better. Case in point, fast on Thursday in the test session, fast on Friday in practice, decent qualifying effort. They changed left side tires. He was unhappy in the practice last night. Weren't great early as far as back as 37th in the running order, and here he is, Wally. Uh, uh, like Kyle said, if you watch this car through the corners right now, it's just solid. Yes. And, and they haven't had any tire issues today, which is a big bonus. Uh, you know, Stewart's been really, really fast, but those guys have been blistering tires. So, I mean, like you said, Kyle, all he's got to do is keep clicking off these laps, and he's going to get it. Yeah, we talk about the 88 and how impressive that team's been. I, I think I've been more impressed with Junior this year. His head has been in the game all year long. From the time they got to Daytona, I mean, he was committed to winning races and committed to taking this team to another place. Um, and, and he's been doing it week in and week out. He's just been there and he's been disappointed. It's good to see him when a race was over with when he run fourth, be mad because he run fourth, you know, and, and that was really big. And, and I think it's showing, it has shown more and more and more and you see it today. I mean, he's right now at least just over two mile per hour faster than the second place car of Tony Stewart. I mean, he is flying right now. Dale Jr.'s led over 200 laps in 2012, 80 of them coming here today. That's the most he's led in a season since back in 2008 when he won right here at Michigan. And you can hear when he rolls yes. out of the throttle, he gets right back in that throttle nice and smooth. You don't hear him float in the throttle like we've heard no. other guys earlier today. That's when you know a race car's working. Just listen to that throttle and how he's working it. Yeah, we heard Biff earlier. You listen right here. He rolls out. right back to it he's wide open right here yeah and, and and that car is sticking and he's just driving and then you know we heard biffle earlier go to it come off of it go to it come off of it early in the race but as this racetrack has changed and, and they've kept up stevie latart has done a great job of keeping up with the adjustments we saw him heard and was documented they put the rubber in the left rear early in the race and when they put that rubber in the left rear this car came to life and it's been just right there rock steady ever since while other guys have come and gone 13 laps to go. And his advantage over Tony Stewart, 4.6 seconds. He's not just leading, he is absolutely pulling away from the runner-up smoke. Jimmy Johnson, the next guy in line in the third position. Matt Kenseth and Greg Biffle, the two drivers out of the Roush Fenway organization, complete the top five. Montoya and Ambrose have spent a lot of time inside the top 10 today. They've got the final two spots there right now. Ambrose in the 10th position, and you see Montoya right in front of him in ninth. Casey Kane involved in that accident. He's back out and running now. He's 42 laps down, but you take him out of the equation, and he'd been pretty strong. You got Gordon, Johnson, and Junior all out of the Hendrick stables running inside the top six. Good race here for uh, ninth and eighth, not or ninth and tenth. Excuse me. I, I think we talked about it earlier. I think Ambrose's car just works better behind somebody else's yes. car. Yes. Yeah, it, it seems to. It was that way in, in the beginning, and 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 he's and he's worked a little bit better on longer runs. He's come from farther back and moves up three or four positions every time. Every time we've had a caution. Coming to 10 laps to go here this afternoon, Larry. Well, just looking at Dale Earnhardt Jr., what a difference a year has made with this 88 team and driver Earnhardt because we talked about what he did at Pocono. If he can lead these last 11 laps in those two races alone, 
he would have led 131 laps. He only led 52 laps total last year, and if he can close it out with a top 10 finish today, and it looks like he will, he'll match his top 10's total from 2011. Big championship implications here. Dale Earnhardt Jr. entered today. 10 points behind Matt Kenseth for the championship lead. And he gets that victory, which means bonus points when we come toward the chase. Yeah, but here's the championship implications. The championship implications are he can win races and win a championship. You know, I mean, everybody's talked about it. Can he, we know he's can make, he can make points. We've seen him make points. We've seen him do that for the last couple of years to be in the chase. But he needed to step over that broom into that area where you say, yeah, I can win races and win them on a regular basis. He could have theoretically be sitting here going for his second win in a row. Well, he's finished second seven times since he last won here four seasons ago. And you think about some of the moments. Last year's Coca-Cola 600 coming to turn four, runs out of gas. Martinsville when Kevin Harvick got him in the closing laps. He smelled the front, just hasn't been able to get there. And there's a pass for position. Matt Kenseth driving to the inside of Jimmy Johnson to grab the third spot on track. These two guys have gone at it for about the past 25 laps. They've not let each other get more than about a car length or two from each other. Allen Hart Jr. down at turn one. Some lap traffic there to the inside of Travis Quapple. That thing just that rotates. Thing is on a rail. Yeah, it just rotates to the center. When he picks up the gas, it changes directions. It changes directions, and it just drives up off the yeah, corner. Yeah, and sticks. And sticks. <laughs> so, but, yeah. so when you get out of gas, you want the thing to definitely stick. And like you said, it drives straight off the yeah, corner. Yeah, you look at him. He's right off that bottom line, about a car length, a car length and a half. We just saw Jimmy Johnson in the 17 race, and they go in and let him slide up a little bit and then get it gathered up and go again. And it only takes that split second to gather it up and go again. But Junior's car has rotated through that the center of the corner. He and Tony Stewart, we spoke of it earlier, right here when it changes direction. Yeah. Their two cars were the, were the better cars. There's Steve Letard. He plays a couple of roles. Sometimes the calming influence. Other times he's the cheerleader. And as Jimmy Johnson loses another position, that's Greg Biffle getting by for fourth in the running order. Jimmy's got to be just lost it or Jim, something. Either that or he's worried about his tires. With, with six or seven laps to go, he must be, he may be feeling something in his tires that he's just trying to bring at home. Dale Jr. across the start finish line. Six laps remaining to his first win in 143 starts. And when you think about Dale Earnhardt Jr. and what he's meant to the sport over the years, today his 450th start in NASCAR's top series. He's been around a good while. Dale Earnhardt Jr. very much aware of the fact that he hasn't won in a while as he comes around here and sees five laps remaining. Five How's he right feeling here, inside the race car, Wally? Oh, I, I got over five seconds. So nice to be here. Five more. That right there is what you want to hear. I mean, you, you've got five seconds. Your car's working great. You got five laps to go. I mean, basically, you're on cruise right here. Just don't make any mistakes. But the biggest thing is he's not being pressured. So. Yeah, if he had someone right in his rearview mirror, you could understand feeling the pressure, thinking about the long windless streak, and maybe having your hand forced into a mistake. When you got a big lead, that's got to help. Yeah, but I don't think Junior's ever really thought about the long windless streak. He just yeah. thought about winning the race and, and getting to where he's at. You know, he's always played it off, and I don't think he played it off as much as he, he truly, truly felt that and believed that, that he was going to win again. Junior off a of turn two and down the back straightaway. When he comes around this time, it will be three laps remaining. I know what he doesn't want to see is a caution right yeah, now. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I was just looking to see where Jimmy Johnson was to see if he was having an issue, but he's kind of fell in to a pretty good rhythm, and Jimmy's trying to stay ahead of the 24 car of Jeff Gordon. But he's way off the pace he's running. He's running the last lap was 184. Two, three laps ago, he's running 188. Now, Jimmy Johnson changed engines, came from the back to the fifth position. Ryan Newman did the same. He's one lap down in 17th. And Carl Edwards, who had to start at the rear of the field after qualifying problems yesterday, finds himself 11th in the latter stages. I hate they paved Michigan, to be honest with you. 
because these fans are going to burn this place down <laughs> when we get to that point. It was just going to be a big old waste of money. But <laughs> Junior has, I mean, this has been a great day for these guys. No, it has. They have dominated. This will be the 93rd lap he has led as we get two to go in the Quicken Loans 400. You're on board with Dale Earnhardt Jr. Look at how that steering wheel, how steady that is. Yeah. Coming to white, he just needs to get back to this. And then it won't matter if we get a caution because the green-white checker situation will be out the window once Dale Earnhardt Jr. gets the white flag. And he sees it right now. There you go, buddy, white flag. Take a one more time for me, please. Two more miles to victory for Dale Earnhardt Jr. as the crowd stands and cheers here at Michigan. Oh, my God. I, I, I wish people at home could be here <laughs> to see these people in the grandstands and to hear them. We're up here in the TV, TV booth, and you can hear these people. Junior down the back straightaway and into turn three for the final time. There is going to be a party in Junior Nation tonight. Three by winning, boy. Hell yeah. <laughs> the streak is over. Dale Earnhardt Jr. Congrats, back to victory lane in Michigan. Thanks. Yeah, I double checked it wasn't the 500. We really want it. <laughs> All right. Hey, good job, man. I know you guys are been waiting on that one. I know I am. See that monkey fly off his back when yep. he took the check flag? Yeah, you know, but I, I think his voice said it all when he said, I really don't know what to say. After all that time, listen to the crowd. After all that time, he expected it. And, and I think that said it all. He hadn't been able to celebrate in a while. He's going to make this one last. Burn it down, Dale Jr. After 143 races without a win, he's making the donuts on the front straightaway. win for the driver and I'm sure the crew chief is smiling as well let's check in downstairs well Adam there's hugs there's tears down here and everything and uh, Stevie a lot of big wins in your career where does this one rank among them now, this one's up there a long ways uh, I just want to thank everyone involved I'm not new Chevrolet National Guard we couldn't do it without them but uh, you know, HMS Dale Jr. he drove a great race and this crew it's been a long time since they've won they really deserve it I know it's hard not to be emotional when you think about the emotion. Is it all the work that went into it that makes you emotional? Uh, yeah, a lot of close calls, a lot of seconds. Good to finally win one. Now this one's off our back. Uh, looking forward to the chase. I hope you weren't planning on using that engine again, were you? No, I can't thank Hendrick Engines enough. We ran way over our limit in practice. And, uh, man, that was 200 beautiful laps. The, their engines are unbelievable. How happy are you for him? Uh, I can't say enough. Him. Uh, He's done everything I've asked him to do. I know he's taken a lot of criticism in his career, but I've never seen one ounce of criticism he deserves from me. He's driven the wheels off in every lap, and uh, it's just been fun. It's been a lot of fun. Other days you wondered if this would ever happen? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure there was, but uh, these guys kept my heads up. My wife, my family, Mr. Hendrick, they, uh, they always keep you pointing in the right direction. I believe we're about to have a celebration, Adam. What do you think? I think it's on, Marty. It is well underway in the grandstand. And when Dale Earnhardt Jr. climbs from that race car, his team going to celebrate with him. They've been close so many times. You heard Steve Latar talk about the runner-up finishes. Today, they definitely received the fruits of their labor. And this is the second consecutive week we've seen a long winless streak come to an end. Joey Logano got it done last week at Pocono. Today, it's Dale Earnhardt Jr. Let's go to victory lane and Matt Yoakum.
And over the past four years, Dale Earnhardt Jr. has finished second seven different occasions. This year, they said they were going to take it to a whole new level. And right now, he's on the phone talking to the boss man, Mr. H, Rick Hendrick. Special day for the entire organization. Long time coming. And what a party it's going to be for Junior Nation. Special colors this weekend that he helped design and fitting in, drive them to victory lane. Victory Lane, what the boss, Mr. H, have to say? Oh, he's just upset he couldn't be here. Um, that's a great race. I want to thank my sponsors, National Guard, Diet Mountain Dew. Uh, great to have the Batman on the car today. Uh, we just had a really good car, and uh, Chevrolet was real fast. Just uh, pretty amazing. I, I was, those, are last, those last 15 laps are the longest laps ever. And uh, I don't know what to think about it just yet, you know what I mean? Junior, it's been four years. Your fans have stuck behind you. This guy right here, Steve Lahart, Steve Latart, stuck behind you. What's the most satisfying part of this victory? To do it for my fans. They stuck behind me for all these years, and I know exactly uh, what they've been thinking about and how long they've been wanting us to get to Victory Lane. And so this was for them. I uh, appreciate their loyalty and their support, and we we wouldn't have made it back to Victory Lane without it. So. Uh, that's who we got to give all the credit to. You look at today, it posed so many challenges. Crew chief is smiling as well. Let's check in downstairs. Well, Adam, there's hugs, there's tears down here and everything. And uh, Stevie, a lot of big wins in your career. Where does this one rank among them? Uh, this one's up there a long ways. Uh, I just want to thank everyone involved. Diamond News, Chevrolet National Guard. We couldn't do it without them. But uh, you know, HMS, Dale Jr., he drove a great race. And this crew, it's been a long time since they've won. They really deserve it. I know it's hard not to be emotional. When you think about the emotion, is it all the work that went into it that makes you emotional? Uh, yeah, a lot of close calls, a lot of seconds. Good to finally win one. Now this one's off for back. Uh, looking forward to the chase. Uh, you weren't planning on using that engine again, were you? No, I can't thank Hendrick Engines enough. We ran way over our limit in practice. And uh, man, that was 200 beautiful laps. The, their engines are unbelievable. How happy are you for him? Uh, I can't say enough. Him. Uh, He's done everything I've asked him to do. I know he's taken a lot of criticism in his career, but I've never seen one ounce of criticism he deserves from me. He's driven the wheels off at every lap, and uh, it's just been fun. It's been a lot of fun. Other days you wondered if this would ever happen? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure there was, but uh, these guys kept my heads up. My wife, my family, Mr. Hendrick, they, uh, they always keep you pointing in the right direction. I believe we're about to have a celebration, Adam. What do you think? I think it's on, Marty. It is well underway in the grandstand. And when Dale Earnhardt Jr. climbs from that race car, his team going to celebrate with him. They've been close so many times. You heard Steve Latart talk about the runner-up finishes. Today, they definitely receive the fruits of their labor. And this is the second consecutive week we've seen a long winless streak come to an end. Joey Logano got it done last week at Pocono. Today, it's Dale Earnhardt Jr. Let's go to Victory Lane and Matt Yoakum. And over the past four years, Dale Earnhardt Jr. has finished second seven different occasions. This year they said they were going to take it to a whole new level. And right now he's on the phone talking to the boss man, Mr. H, Rick Hendrick. Special day for the entire organization. Long time coming. And what a party it's going to be for Junior Nation. Special colors this weekend that he helped design and fitting in, drive them to victory lane.
dominating day. Junior, welcome home to Victory Lane. What the boss, Mr. H, have to say? Oh, he's just upset he couldn't be here. Um, that's a great race. I want to thank my sponsors, National Guard, Diet Mountain Dew. Uh, great to have the Batman on the car today. Uh, we just had a really good car, and uh, Chevrolet was real fast. Just uh, pretty amazing. I, I was, those are last, those last 15 laps are the longest laps ever, and uh, I don't know what to think about it just yet. You know what I mean? Junior, it's been four years. Your fans have stuck behind you. This guy right here, Steve Lahart, Steve Latart, stuck behind you. What's the most satisfying part of this victory? To do it for my fans. They stuck behind me for all these years. And I know exactly uh, what they've been thinking about and how long they've been wanting us to get to Victory Lane. And so this was for them. I uh, appreciate their loyalty and their support. And we, we wouldn't have made it back to Victory Lane without it. So uh, that's who we got to give all the credit to. You look at today, it posed so many challenges. New track surface, the tire change, the weather itself, what was the biggest difference? Was it the change that Stevie made on the second stop with the spring rubber? Yeah, we changed, well, yeah, we, I don't know what, he, what all he did, but he made it right, and uh, I think it was real fast. I want to also thank Sprint. Uh, they do a good job uh, supporting our sport. Don't get enough credit for it. I appreciate what they do. Uh, tr the track surface was great today. Um, the tire was, uh, was, a, was a tough one, a little bit of curveball, but we didn't have any trouble. We got to put on a race, and. Uh, I think NASCAR good year for, for, for the work they did. Like those prolific poets from England once said, the new boss looks a lot like the old boss. Dale Jr. back in victory lane. You get the feeling now that he's 1-1, the floodgates could open? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm telling you, he could be, after last week, he could be sitting here two in a row. And like still. those prolific poets from England said. <laughs> could what be did two they in say a row. again? So, I don't know. It was, it was something that he said. <laughs> Finally, the wait is over. Dale Earnhardt Jr. back in victory lane. We continue with our post-race coverage on TNT after a break. NASCAR fans, get your 2012 American Salutes die cast at the NASCAR.com Superstore. I've worked hard to build my family and also to build my career. So I'm not about to all... Okay, let's roll right into our post-race for today's 44th annual Quicken Loans 400 NASCAR Sprint Cup Series race here at Michigan. Welcome back to the NASCAR on TNT post-race show. Reminder, coming up at 6.30 here on TNT, it's Sherlock Holmes 
And make sure you're with us at 9 p.m. Eastern tonight on TNT. It's a special two-hour season premiere of Falling Skies. Again, that's at 9 p.m. Eastern time. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. celebrating in victory lane, receiving congratulations from a number of drivers. The man who finished right behind him today, Ralph Shaheen with Tony Stewart. Tony Stewart getting a quick drink of Coke here. Boy, from where you guys were yesterday, working to get the car to second here today was a monumental effort. Tell me about that run. Yeah, it really was. I mean, we, we were 27th quick on the sheet yesterday, so... Uh, you know, we had a lot of curveballs thrown our way, but I was really proud of Steve Addington and these guys. It's, uh, I mean, it's amazing what one night uh, and those guys thinking what, what they came up with. It just uh, was a totally different race car today. I'm really proud of them. Well, Matt Kenseth made a nice run there at the end. He got around Johnson. You almost got to Stewart. How close were you to getting around him? I just couldn't quite get around him. He was tight, so he was running low, so I couldn't get any air underneath him. And uh, I was too loose to run down lower on that less banking and too tight to run behind him. So, uh, But it was a good day for the 17 car. We were able to work our way back up through traffic and, and finish third. And uh, congratulations to Dale Jr. They've just been running awesome this year. And uh, nice to see him stand over there in victory lane. Congratulations on a nice top five. Thanks. Well, Jeff Gordon finished the sixth today, and Jeff, that middle part of the race, you looked so strong, and there weren't tire issues with the 24. I just looked at the right rear corner, and you got some blisters. I knew something happened there in that last run. Uh, we took off there, and it was really good, and boy, it just went away fast. Got really, really loose. So, yeah, that's unfortunate. Um, man, what a great day for Hendrick Motorsports and Junior and Stevie and all those guys on, on that 88 team. So proud of them. Proud of my guys, too. I mean, we, we fought hard to come from 28th. It was not easy, and uh, you know, we, uh, we had a really good race car today. So happy Father's Day. I know uh, to Rick especially, happy Father's Day to you, Rick. I know that was a great uh, Father's Day gift. And, uh, you know, I'm just glad we had a solid day as well, something to build on. Craig Biffle, you had a fast race car today. Why couldn't you get it to the front? Yeah, I just couldn't use the pedal on the right. You know, I couldn't use any more gas. We were chunking right rears. And, uh, you know, I had my car a little bit too free, I guess. And, uh, you know, I could run fast lap times, but the right rear would come apart. So I just had to pace myself. Um, kind of like I had to do at Indy a few years back, you know, just I couldn't drive it any harder than, you know, so hard. But I want to say Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there, including mine. And, you know, I'm very excited for Junior. What a great day for him to win on. There's been a lot of pressure on him, and uh, he's a great driver. I'm so glad he won. Persistence paid off for Greg, though. He gets a fourth. That's good points. Well, Jimmy Johnson hangs on. I mean, hangs on for a fifth-place finish today. Man, that looked like a rough ride on that last run. Yeah, we were coming. We were really flying, and then I blistered the right rear again yeah. and yeah. had to uh, just hang on and let some guys go. Um, and then I ran out of fuel going into turn three and coasted around <laughs> and made it to the finish line. So, you know, just a, a, a tough day, but a good finish, so we'll take that. And I just couldn't be more happy for my teammate. Um, Junior's been chipping away at it, and it's been so close to victory. Um, and I'm real happy for him and for Stevie. And, and what we have going on in Hendrick Motorsports, especially inside the 4888 shop, is really special. And I couldn't be more proud of everybody involved. Yeah, we're doing the interview from Victory Lane because you bolted straight over here to say congratulations. Yeah, I had to get over here quick. Um, this is, uh, I, know how I know how hard he's been working on this, how bad he's wanted it, and how good this is going to make him feel. And um, the confidence it's going to give him and that race team for uh, the rest of the year and for time to come. So just super stoked for him. Considering all he went through, I would say fifth, not bad for Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson in the top five, but it's his teammate, Dale Earnhardt Jr., who gets the trophy. 19th win of Dale Jr.'s career in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. So what did that do to the driver standings? Kins is still on top, but Dale Jr. cut six points out of his lead. He's four behind with 15 races complete. Greg Biffle stayed third. Jimmy Johnson, Denny Hamlin complete the top five. Tony Stewart, solid day, 74 points out of the lead, back in eighth. Brad Keselowski stayed in the top ten. Now the wild card picture, Carl Edwards still 11th, two behind the top ten. Kyle Busch has wild card position number one. Ryan Newman, the second wild card spot. Joey Logano, Casey Kane, 15th and 16th respectively. Both drivers have a win in 2012 and certainly a part of the wild card equation. It's been a long day for all of us here at NASCAR on TNT. Special thanks to our producer, Jeff Randolph, our director, Mike Wells, for Larry McReynolds, Kyle Petty, 
and Wally Dollenbach. I'm Adam Alexander. Next Sunday, NASCAR on TNT heads out west to Sonoma. Coverage begins at 2 p.m. Eastern time with Countdown to Green, followed by the Toyota Save Mart 350. Tonight at 9 p.m. on TNT, it's the two-hour season premiere of Falling Skies. Coming up next at 6.30 on TNT, it's Sherlock Holmes. Head over to NASCAR.com now for the NASCAR on TNT post-race show. Congratulations to Dale Earnhardt Jr. He's a winner again in the Sprint Cup Series. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our loyal fans for your continued support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.